Hello everyone and welcome to the VML. We are sponsored by Wizards of the Coast and we are in 11 week long MTGA League which showcases the talents of amazing people of marginalized genders within the magic community. This is week 7 of 13 and there are 128 total players. Players are divided into 16 divisions and endure 7 weeks of round robin play. And what we are playing for is, in addition to cash prizing the top 16, which again, we're going to be paying attention to that a lot this week with our wild cards in particular, the top 16 get qualifier weekend badges and the top eight get RC invites and they get to compete in our capstone event, the VML championship where the top eight players from seasons 11, 12, and 13 duke it out. And the top two players will receive invitations to the following Magic the Gathering Pro Tour. I'm Sky Bills and I'm along here with Kuro. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. I just can't wait to dive into these, these matches. Yes, we do have a lot of interesting matches. And we were talking, there, there was a lot of information, information overload that was dumped about next year. <laughs> so, so many cool things going on. We're talking Aether Drift, Final Fantasy, Tarkir's coming back. There are so many exciting things to keep track of. And let's not forget, Foundations is coming out in a few weeks also. So that is going to play a very big role in our standards. So real quick, Kuro, is there anything in Foundations you think that might shake up standard well um i remember uh we, we let our elves is a card that has just been dominating formats ever since it's been ever since the history of magic like one mana mana dorks have always been good literally in every format uh, so it's hard they're to gonna be banned that... first thing right it's gonna get no! the, uh, the lutri treatment of right no it's not <laughs> going to be banned no. memory jar memory jar the sequel no i oh, um, no, 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 yeah. no 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 <laughs> it, it'll be it'll be really good to have a nice consistent backbone for standard because then everything will sort of be based on that idea and then people can build decks based on that I, i'm excited about it 
Oh, big sting. So we were talking about diving into it. Let's talk about the current state of standard right now in our meta game breakdown. Again, thank you so much for folks working behind the scenes hard on this meta game breakdown. So we have Gruel Prowess. Again, we're kind of facing the cyclical thing where we see Controls has it one week and then Aggro has it in one week. And we keep trading hands here at the top of the pack, Gruel Prowess, followed by Golgari Midrange. Mono White Token Control, Demir Midrange and Domain Ramp, Azurius Tempo, and then as far as the Fringe decks here. So what do you think is the current dominating deck in Standard, especially with some of the decks that we've been seeing in the World Championship this weekend, Kura? Well, we've had a lot of midrange stuff happening. Uh, as you can see, Golgari midrange is taking up and has been taking up a, a large portion of the metagame, even before uh, Duskborn was released. Uh, and then, of course, you have extremely good powerhouse cards that have a lot of prowess, a lot of damage output. Um, as some of you may know, Leyline of Resonance was banned in best of one simply because it was so oppressive and fast for the aggro decks. Now, of course, we're playing best of three this time, but that's really just to illustrate these cards can deal a lot of damage and they can get you a ton of value for very cheap. Um, these, these decks all take advantage, full advantage of this idea. Even Domain Ramp, a deck that thrives on extremely high value cards, will be ramping with very cheap cards. And all of the removal is still very efficient. And it's just a matter of who gets their major pieces and when. The, the, the term oppressive, it feels like so heavy, but then you mentioned best of one and I'm like, yeah, absolutely. As much as I like yeah. for things to go boom, that's a little too much. You know, we like to see some nice, healthy variety. And I do feel like the best of one band was very warranted. Good on Wizards for doing that. So what are we going to do with all these current meta decks? Well, let's go into the first one here. And we got a real heavy hitting match to start here. We have the one, the only, Autumn. And Autumn is here. By the way, 6-0 record so far going for the 7-0. Holy moly, Autumn. And Autumn is on Golgari Midrange. You're seeing a lot of action here lately from Golgari Mid. Even in the World Championship this weekend, we have the Archkin the Dross, the Mosswood Dread Knight, of course, and the Tranquil Furl back here. So what, what do you think is going to be a the, the the difference maker in this matchup in terms of what is in Golgari midrange, Kuro? Well, this matchup is going to be highlighted by a lot of card advantage. The thing that Golgari has over uh, Demir midrange is the fact that that those green cards give you so much beef that your creatures are just bigger. The creatures get value, and they're just bigger. Trample helps you get the damage through, and Glissa Sunslayer is, as a first strike death touch, means it will win basically every combat that you fight against. Um, you have access to Black, which has basically the best card draw and best removal in the format, uh, along with uh, really valuable uh, uh, animate lands like Restless Cottage. And yeah, and again, we're entering into this final week here. Yeah, and that's very important, very important theme throughout tonight. And again, we're talking about picking decks in the VML, very challenging aspect of the VML, and wanted to choose a deck with the metagame in mind. And again, just thinking about all the different decks that Adam can play, Adam kind of threw a curveball here, it looks like. So their opponent, their opponent here. We have GDI Nut, and oh my gosh, they are also 5-1. and one. Very, very, very tough here. And we have Demir mid-range here. So uh, this is going to be a mid-range on mid-range matchup. Uh, well, of course, we have bats. We always have bats in the format. But I'm seeing we have a, a new Kaido, a new Kaido in this deck. Do you think between that and the Enduring Curiosity that that's going to be a difference maker here in this matchup? Because they're both very potent. Yeah, what the Demir deck lacks in creature size, it more than makes up for it with card advantage, like raw card advantage, drawing cards basically for free um, and creating that snowball effect of I'm going to destroy your creatures, I'm going to counter your stuff, and I can overwhelm you with both resources and with tempo. Um, all, all, most of these creatures having flying or some other relevant ability makes it really hard for the Gogari deck to easily block this. So it's going to be a matter of establishing an early board state and seeing if you can maintain it. All right. Well, this is going to be a mid-range on mid-range matchup. Y'all better buckle your seats and we're going into the first match tonight. And let's see what we got going on here. Oh, yes. This is one I forgot to talk about. The Unholy Annex Ritual Chamber, a very dominant card from Duskmorn. And this looks like a very good hand 
from autumn to start with. So again, very, very strong domineering first hand here. What is GDI not going to have to do to counteract such a good hand from autumn? Uh, they're going to have to be very careful about the threats. The thing about Autumn's hand is that it's not particularly aggressive. I mean, the classic Broncos have the stats are ultimately not the greatest uh, compared to some of the other creatures in the deck. Liliana and Unholy Annex doesn't add a creature, and Liliana could be useful, but if, G if GDI Knight has multiple creatures, the sacrifice is a little marginal. Um, so it's going to be a matter of can Autumn get down the Archfiend and let it stick? Because if GDI Nat's really thinking, I need those go for the threats, just in case a huge Shieldred or Archfiend or Glissa Sunslayer comes down. And again, GDI Nat taking full advantage here of going first down the middle for four. Let's see how Autumn counteracts this move. And again, there's there's a ton of things I could be do here for three. But first, maximizing the probability of maybe drawing something that might change the move goes down the middle with caustic Rontico into an anoint with affliction here so let's see if we're going to get a three cost here are we going to see a frillback are we going to see lily of the veil are we going to see unholy annex and will the two mana untap for gdi not be an x factor here yeah gdi not has uh three phantom interference as main deck counter spells so autumn's thinking can i afford to play something into a counter spell right now and if i do how bad is it uh, Autumn's thinking, I'm going to pass the turn, I'm going to hold up Anoint with Affliction. That way, if GDI Nuts holding a counter spell, it's wasting one of their turns. So as you can see, they didn't have anything end of turn. Um, this Enduring Curiosity, however, could threaten to draw two cards. And it can't be killed in the traditional way. You have to exile it, because you, you can't, if you destroy it, it comes back as an enchantment that isn't a creature. Yeah, Anoint with Affliction there being used. One draw off the Enduring Curiosity. And important to note here, in our layout, it is Autumn with the 6-1 record. Or sorry, with the 6-0 record. So again, the uh, uh, two different records here are flawed. Very, very sorry about that. We'll make sure to address that. But want to make sure we let y'all know. Lily of the Veil. For sacrificing a creature, it will likely be... Likely be the Simon, we'll see. It is a 4-3 after all. This is this is a decision here having to be made by GDI not here early on in game number one. It will be the Siren and the Blue Blossoming Marsh comes in. No attack here down the middle. Probably not going to need that card draw as we go into GDI Nuts' turn here. So this Enduring Curiosity again, going to be very domineering here, likely going into Lily as we see here. Yeah, that Lily is down. The Curiosity is very nice, because if Autumn has a go for the throw, they need two. Well, no, not even, because the Curiosity would just come back as a normal enchantment. So it's really difficult to deal with. Autumn's thinking, if I play this Archfiend, I'm playing into a Carousel. If I play this Unholy Annex, I'm playing into a Carousel. Duress is nice. But it means the Archfiend can't be cast, which is going to be a problem. And there's no cast. Well. And this is so, a very interesting situation here, isn't it, yes. Kuro? Because now, it this is not a situation you see either of these two decks in. There's a lane in an Enduring Curiosity left in GDI Nut's hand, which right now, I mean, it doesn't look like much of an advantage. But this is a really good advantage here for Autumn, considering the way in which the draws have been unfolding. Yeah, it's you know that you're in an interesting board state when Autumn believes the best play is to play a 3-3 vanilla with no abilities. Um, <laughs> GDI Nuts thinking, well, Autumn's at 10. I can animate this land and basically force Autumn to block, or I get to draw a card for free. And I can mill four cards, Ooh. which is very helpful. Um, and the Curiosity, and it's okay for the Curiosity to die because the effect is still in play. Like, so the creature dies, but there's still draw effects happening. So this reef is still going to potentially win the game uh, for GDI Nut. Yeah, and I love the play that GDI Nut did here with the reef again. It's very creative, Ooh. gets the draw in, and that is a land for Autumn, which, you know, at this point, it could be very helpful to have that. And it looks like, if I were to guess, Autumn's going for the 6-6 six, six demon here, and that is exactly what they're going to do. And all of a sudden now, it's down to the draw here. If GDI not can find some removal, game number one will be over most likely. 
It's possible. Gediana needs one of the only go for the throats. There's already one in the graveyard, so mm. it's unlikely to have one. But we should remember that this Restless Reef does have Death Touch. So this is a potential trade that could have been made. A GDI wants to save mana for the Enduring Curiosity in the hand, however, which is what I think they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. Autumn could try to gain life with the Unholy Annex, but they seem to think it's more important to do the Arching of the Dross, which I think is a perfectly fine play. Getting that pressure in to basically create a two-turn clock on GDI Nut is probably the most important thing right now. Um, but there's an argument to be made that drawing the card and draining for two is good as well. All right, Archfiend of the Dross, no counter spell from GDI Nut. So it's looking like a, per, uh, a flash play here, and that is another Tranquil Frillback on the top. I'm just thinking about it right now and keeping it. It's a creature, why not? It's something that's useful, and it could potentially also gain life and get rid of the Enduring Curiosities, as those do, I believe, get rid of enchantments. It does. So that, that Frillback is actually going to be really nice. Ooh. Oh! there's another go for the throat and we go into the next draw and let's see what happens here we're thinking about it are we going for the reef is gdi not gonna go for the reef i do like the reef here because oh earth oh! resurrected that is so rough that is Autumn. also a play there yes earth resurrected and now all of a sudden down the middle for four and suddenly Thanks Autumn too. is in a bit of trouble due to also the Annex itself, which is capable of dealing two damage, but Shieldred, and there's the Froback now. So this is a very interesting situation. Interested to see how this Froback's going to be played here, and will it be Autumn's ticket back into the game? Well, Autumn's play here is to play Froback, pay exactly one extra mana, kill the Curiosity that is a creature, then play a Caustic Bronco and hope to block the Restless Reef and the uh, Urtai. Unfortunately, this is uh, resource negative, meaning that Autumn's going to be down on resources after it's going to be over. Like that curiosity is going to go away, but Autumn has to sacrifice both of their creatures to get rid of, to, to not die to GDI Nut. Mm -hmm. Ooh, but they're also thinking about gaining four life. I don't hate that actually. Gaining four life is also fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah, you can block something and then not die. It's more reliable. But if GDI now has a single piece of removal, it's just over. Again, and this, it's worth noting that at one point, GDI not looked like they were in trouble because, again, the resources were so minimal. But because of the reefs and the pressure brought on by the reefs, GDI Nut is so much in this game now, and uh, now it's Autumn trying to hang in there. And it looks like we're going to see all three phases of Tranquil, tranquil Frillback being used. Yeah, because the cool thing about the Frillback is because of the order of the text, when you kill an Enduring card with its ability and exile their graveyard, it does not come back. Oh, but there's a Fairy Mastermind, Ooh. and this game is officially over. Yep. Um, there goes the Enemy land. And that's game Walk number one. Take exactly five damage. That is wow. That yep. was quite the game there, though. That was really well played by both of them. And again, there were so many twists and turns to that match. So now we take a look at the sideboard situation. And it looks like Autumn's going to be removing Lillian of the Veil and the Tranquil Frillback. Interesting. So lots of plays being made here. We have a Terra Sunder in the deck now. Uh, additional stuff on one with the cutdowns and the dresses getting rid of one of the Broncos here. This is a really cool side deck uh, from Autumn. And again, this looks like it's very durable. It does a lot of things, but can it withhold or, you know, stand up against Demir? Demir looked very dominating in that game number one once it got rolling. Once it drew something beyond a curiosity and a land for that matter, Kuro. I kind of like the idea of Ghost Vacuum here, especially after the Exile would be very helpful. The Terra Thunder inside is the deck is, is very, very nice because now uh, those Enduring Curiosities can be killed permanently rather than sticking around. Um, so hopefully this is sufficient. Uh, this hand looks really nice. It's very efficient oh, and very yeah. uh, close to the ground. Uh, Moss with Dreadnight drawing a card is very nice. We love to see that. That is a fantastic hand for Autumn as GDI Nut Mulligans. Let's see if uh, they okay. still have a very strong seven here after the mulligan. We have a duress from Autumn. So what is Autumn going to go for here? Looks like 
something dealing with the Dread Knight and or its uh, sorcery. And again, we do have the adventurer going off. So again, Autumn trying to find that maximum value despite going first, which makes sense. You want to keep your lands down. You want to keep the train rolling as much as possible. When is Autumn going to get a look into GDI Notes hand? We don't have it here on cast. Right Let's now. take a yeah. look at the hand right now. I'm very interested. I guess GDI is thinking, do I... Oh, oh there's only one. Oh, that's oh. actually really rough because mm -hmm. we wanted to see that counter spell, but now if GDI not draws a counter spell later, it's going to be really rough for Autumn. Uh, that fairy mastermind is going to come in for sure. Um, and Autumn's going to think about what do I do here? They yeah. seem to be holding up Harvester of Misery just for the fairy mastermind so that it can't come in. Mm -hmm. Wow. Instead and of the Mosswood Dread Knight. My guess is it doesn't look at like the Harvester because you're making maximum use out of the mana right now and you're probably not going to see yes. it as a creature too much here. So very good call here by Autumn. Again, the cutdown would have been good as well. But again, Autumn's got an idea of what's going to be going on in the next couple turns. So they definitely have a plan. And again, nicely, we have full knowledge, much to GDI Nut's disdain, I'm sure, because <laughs> GDI Nut does not <laughs> know what's in Autumn's hand. And that is a Glissa Sun seeker and another fairy mastermind okay okay we love uh, to see this uh yeah. gdi is thinking well the shield could ever come down at any moment they have to draw the card as soon as possible um it's entirely possible that if gdi not draws a land that the enduring curiosity is just gonna slam down main phase just so that gdi not can draw those cards mm -hmm. yeah even though it has flash because those cards are more valuable than anything else but that shield mm -hmm. coming down may prove to be some problematic yeah, suddenly, you know, with the Enduring Curiosity, Shieldred seems very, very relevant here, especially since that, that's a second Curiosity as displayed. But so far, Autumn wants to see what they might potentially draw off the Glissa. Makes sense here. And Glissa goes down. But do you destroy the enchantment? Yes, Autumn yes. opts to destroy the enchantment in a fantastic play here for them. It was a very unfortunate that GDI note didn't block that because the outcome is the same if it's blocked, but it doesn't take three damage, which could mean the difference between a win and a loss, depending on how this game goes. Also, those Enduring Curiosities are now kind of poisoned as long as the shield rids out because uh, the draw is mandatory, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, it is mandatory draw. So GDI note needs to play around these shield rids as much as possible. And suddenly, here comes GDI now with the Urtai. That Urtai was huge there for them. So now, Autumn likely going to be taking another peek at GDI Nut's hand in a second here. So there is a chance. There is a chance of the cottage, but I believe with the land, both can be played here. But not animating the cottage here as, again, wanting to get full use of this going to probably get rid of the enchantment that is the curiosity because again there's going to be a second one in play what do you feel like would have been a good play here maybe play the duress main phase one to maybe figure out what's going on with that that's that's a tough call overall it's unnecessary i mean gdana didn't have mana available so any potential counter or removal is sort of not really a question mm -hmm. uh the real issue is uh is it worth blocking the glissa to protect the enduring curiosity I think it's not really, because ultimately it's it's wasting a card draw that Autumn could have because uh, G, because Autumn is valuing this uh, this lack of card draw over drawing more cards themselves, and you know this curiosity is able to get through um, this map token or this duress. Uh <laughs> Well, that's a dress well, for the ages, huh? Oh, no! <laughs> and the Terra Sunder! And that's that's really... Guys. Wait, that's lethal because the land comes down. Yes. And then the and then there's the animate land. That that's is exactly correct. exactly seven damage. And looks like that's going to do it. Autumn is going to be 7-0. Again, the records were flipped here, so what? that is important to note. Wait. Well, the, that was game... Oh, wait, not yet. You're right. It's one and one, I think, right now. Oh my gosh, this match! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I stand corrected. It's one one. I think I think you got a little overexcited there. I, I feel like duresses would be cited out here just because like we're not seeing too many removal spells. We're not seeing too many counter spells. Knowing what's in their hand is kind of whatever. Um 
I really kind of want to see the ghost vacuum be used, but I understand why it's not being brought in. But I really want the ghost vacuum to be used. I really, really want to see it. It's just such a cool sideboard card. I did get pumped up by that match. My apologies. But we are going to it was be a game good number match. three. It was a good match. And you no, no, know what? I'm looking forward to seeing game number oh. three. And now you've been hurt. You have been hurt, Kuro. Here comes the ghost vacuum. <laughs> it's just like I say it and it comes into being. <laughs> there it is. There it into is. Into existence. I really, it, it's nice because if you use a removal spell on the Enduring Curiosity, instead of it coming back, the Ghost Vacuum allows you to not have to worry about it. And then later, as a kicker, you can make it into a 1 1 on your side of the battlefield. Now, if it dies, it's a token, so it doesn't come back. But it's still very useful. Like now, the, uh, the dies ability doesn't really read what it's supposed to say. Um, that's really nice. All right, so this hand now, this hand is looking a little expensive for Autumn. But yes. they keep it. They keep it, though. Interesting. It's worth, well, like I said, GDI Nuts deck is, it's really efficient. It's good, but it's also slower than Autumn's because the creatures aren't as big. Mm -hmm. And the amount of damage it deals on average is not as much. And that's really important to keep in mind in this matchup. Yeah, so now Ghost Vacuum. We're going to be start to do Ghost Vacuum things. And suddenly Perfect. Autumn's going to be wanting to look for lands here because, again, there's not going to be much that can be done without that third land for good reason. So yeah. no land off the a, top. It's a little rough, but they do have removal. It's not the end of the world. Oh, that Tidebender is so nice. That is a really nice Tidebender. That it is, but it can be handled in three different ways, it looks like, per Autumn's hand here. So we'll see what happens with the Tide Binder. No activation beforehand, so not really much of a fear of counterspell from Autumn. Oh, Ooh, and there's that's... the Curiosity. This is a tough one. So there's a couple different options here for Autumn. Which one do you think they'll opt to do, Kira? What I like is the Harvester to kill the Tide Binder and then go for the Thread the Curiosity. Mm -hmm. um it looks like autumn is not prioritizing the three two however i, I think that makes sense though because it can be cut down um so it's not a huge problem as long as this curiosity is exiled that's the important thing i'm not quite sure gdi yeah. not realize that that's how the interaction works but uh well now they know if they didn't already <laughs> something something curiosity killed the cat uh still oh, no land still no land for autumn that is a terra sender though so they have a lot of possibility a... go ahead it's such a feel bad draw after dealing with the curiosity with the ghost vacuum. Because mm -hmm. now Autumn's sitting there going, I really wish I'd killed the type. Maybe I wish I would kill the tide binder and had the go for the throat for a different scenario. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah. now if GDI Nut plays, say, uh, a Shieldred or a Kaito or an Obstuffable Slasher, it's a lot harder to deal. Well, the Slasher is fine. Oh, but here's a Shieldred. Like, now Autumn doesn't have the removal to deal with it when they could have had it if they had had the uh, go for throat still, very unfortunately. But that is a third land, though. That does give Autumn some life. But yes, that is a shouldered on GDI Nut. Again, one of the best creatures in standard right now. When it sticks, it's just, it does so many things. It has extra mileage, and that is a go for the throat from yep. GDI Nut. And shouldered is just going to start doing shouldered things. Hey, you like to shock every single card you draw? Uh, you have four turns left in the entire game. Good luck. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Here we go. <laughs> have fun. Yeah, that Terra Sunder is going to be nice, but it costs so much mana to cast. And then Autumn has to forego playing Shieldred themselves. Okay, that is, is a fourth a... land, though. So this now it becomes is. interesting. So there's a couple different options. Do you deal with the Shieldred? Do you play your own shieldred? I feel like at nine life, Autumn may have to make moves that they don't want to make necessarily. Yeah, the biggest issue is that if Terra Thunder is used on shieldred, then they tap out again. Also, interestingly enough, you actually want the shieldred to die so that the ghost vacuum can theoretically create a one one shieldred later. But the Terra Thunder oh. exiles, the Terra Thunder exiles, which means that the ghost vacuum cannot exile the shieldred and potentially have a shieldred later in the game so that is sort of a really interesting like marginal thing mm -hmm. that may make or break this game oh is this a counter spell oh my it god it is that is huge for gdi nut 
Yeah, if that if that if that terror center was a go for the throat, autumn that would not have been countered. And it's, it's so unfortunate that like it this is really like a good example of deciding which removal you play early game really matters <gasps> oh! in the long run. Yeah. And there goes that Gix's command. So uh GDI Knight has basically guaranteed victory here, as far as I'm concerned. Uh I guess the uh the the magic beings heard me saying no sky no there's a third game and i'm like oh and now we're seeing it <laughs> you got so excited you're like autumn is seven and oh and i'm like well it doesn't happen not quite. often <laughs> unfortunately autumn autumn's needed exactly to draw a land to cut down the siren and play children but unfortunately that siren's gonna hit for two even if the children is played so that's but it still i want to hand it to both GDI Nut and Autumn, they are both at six and one. So maybe production didn't get the records wrong because they were eventually going to turn into each other anyways. How about that? that is that's, fair. <laughs> that's a small technical spoiler there. But no, we, we apologize for that again. Thank you so much to everyone who works hard behind the scenes. We got a lot to sort out while we are in this wild card playoff. You know, there's going to be so many people eliminated as of this week. So again, thank you so much to production and a lot of our other other side of production as well is also at MagicCon this weekend. So again, thank you to everyone who's been working hard behind the scenes with that going on. That was a lot of action, Kuro. <laughs> oh my goodness. Absolutely. That I mean, that well, was really good. Like we had a flurry of spells, lots of card advantage happening. We saw basically the highlights of both decks happening in the same game. Uh, it was really cool seeing all of it interact. But yeah, again, GG to both players. We look forward to seeing y'all in the postseason again. We will, we have not seen the last of both players. And again, GDI not representing yeah. Team Spirit. Much luck to both of y'all in the playoffs. We go on to the next round now. Let's see what we got now. Ooh, we have Haster. And she is on mono white token control. This has been a very, very popular deck, especially as of late. But wait a second. Is that a Toby Beastie Befriender uh, where the wild things are referenced here? I don't know if I've seen that in a mono white token control deck, but it does make perfect sense. Do you notice anything new about this deck other than the potential Toby? Because I haven't seen that. Toby is such a cool card because... It's basically three mana for five power. And since it creates a token, it's really nice. And the token is not legendary, which means that this caretaker's talent is going to go hard. Uh, we can make tons of tokens. Overload of the Mistmoor is one of my favorite white closers in this format right now. Uh, just a lot of really cool value cards that all work really well together. Collector's Cage, a, a commander's uh, kind of staple. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, real Let's quick. I want to I want to read Hasher's uh, deck title quickly because I do believe some of these are very much <laughs> worth reading. Yes. All right, all right, all right. I gotta take a breath before this kind of long. Surprise week seven deck change because I'm scared my opponent might actually metagame me for once, even though I'm not even sure they'll know how to metagame against my deck. Thank you, Hasher. There you go. Big fan, big fan <laughs> of that title. All right, her opponent is Stacy Wilson and again this is the these are both four and two this is going to be a very important match especially for wildcard uh Stacy finally built a TM again that's Stacy's name <laughs> of her deck and they are on domain ramp again very very popular deck but this looks like that this is the overlord slash um we have a Helga Skittish Seer here, and of course a Traxa. What do you make of this deck? I don't know if I've ever seen this build of Domain Ramp. This is so cool. <laughs> I can't even express how excited I am to see this, because Overlord Tribal with Helga as the main way to get these Overlords down, taking full advantage of this impending mechanic, because... Uh, Truly, if I am not mistaken, casting Overlord for an impending cost still triggers Helga, draws you another card. So you have Helga and Up the Beanstalk, which all trigger in all of your Overlord stuffs, uh, and Leyline Binding, of course. You have really nice removal spells and get lost in No More Lies. Like, it's just, it's just high power. It's basically overwhelm your opponent and hope they can't do anything about it. I, I love this. This is like if Control decided I'm going to stop playing Control and just start playing big things. Big how, match. Big, how did I know match. you were going to talk about No More Lies? I just, I, I had this feeling and I left spells. that. 
I, I love that spells. for you. <laughs> I actually, I actually, I actually, I, I became, I actually ate a counter spell growing up, and I became a counter spell <laughs> with my superpower. Uh, it's my origin story. Yep. Oh goodness gracious! All right, well, we're looking forward to this match here, and I'll make sure I pay attention to the stars on the side this time. Here we go. We're going into the second game of the evening here. Hester versus Stacy Wilson, and again, we have a good showdown for y'all. Mono token control versus domain ramp. And here we go. Stacy going first here. Classic first move here. Surreal land. And not too, too much going on from Haster. And by the way, too, forgot to mention this is Team Spirit, Stacy Wilson versus Haster from the Zen Garden. So again, shout outs to VML for having these uh, teams. It's been a lot of fun being a part of Team Spirit myself. And again, I promise not to show any bias here, but I'm just saying if you plan on joining the VML, the teams in particular are a lot of fun. This is interesting. Haster has the thing, do I just play stuff into a counter spell? And Stacy's like, uh, yes, please play into a counter spell. Here we go. <laughs> Get Exile. And has both the important thing to note about both of these decks is that they're both actually quite slow. Um, they don't really start going until like turn four, turn five in terms of board states. Haster doesn't have uh, a single threat that is a creature that costs two or less. And uh, the same is true about Stacy. Like they're both th turn three decks. So it's going to be a lot of early game stall and then playing their actual like value engines later for sure. So, so far, looking like kind of a band deck up until everywhere was playing. And yes, everywhere is the token that the Overlord has played. But speaking of Overlords, I heard you all like Overlords. Now we have the white Overlord versus the green Overlord. Who will prevail? I like this Guardian of Giraffer as a choice. Uh, unfortunately, I wish that it could exile the Overlord and get it back, but that's not really how that works because it's not an artifact or creature. So it's gear, the Guardian of Gearper is sadly going to be very just kind of sad, just chilling there, just existing, doing, being sad. <laughs> being sad. Being um, sad. I, Hobbies. I have... Being sad, being an angel. Top two things. Oh. Oh, and that is a Sunfall, and Sunfall continues to be an absolute juggernaut in the format. So now, again caretaker's talent here going to be your card and it is worth noting that the fountain port especially multiple important to note and haster's hand could be a key element for this game it's just a matter of how does haster respond to the building board now that stacy is establishing with this domain ramp and i'll tell you something these overlords start multiplying it's going to be very difficult for haster to come back without a wipe such as the sunfall we just saw from stacy's side Webboard state. It's just a 5-3 that has flying and the extremely cool ability. I don't see what the problem is. Mm, well, for right now, <laughs> but uh, we do see those counters ticking down on both the overlords right now. And here's so, one we, we haven't we seen We got the in a bricks. While. I was going to say, got the, bricks. the bricks. Build it yeah. bigger. <laughs> Build it. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I, I kinda oh gosh. I really want to just belt out the Bob the Builder theme song when that comes oh down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just we can just build have, it. <laughs> we can build it. We will build it. We will build it bigger. We will build it better. We will build it stronger. And we will also make two one one gnomes at some point. So here's the thing I love about the everywhere token that's made. Have you noticed yes. that Stacy's mana, her mana has been impeccable. It, you would almost think that Stacy is the one who's built the mono color deck right now. And that is keeping up color wise with the mono white deck. It's really quite remarkable to see. And I feel like we don't talk about how easier the green overlord makes the land situation because of that. Yeah. So like, Domain decks these days are basically Celestia Ramp that splash uh, Cavernous Souls to play Atraxa. Because Atraxa is such an amazing threat, it's extremely difficult to fight against. Um, the Overlord makes this a reality. Every single, like, and, and also to boot, it just happens that getting that token land also helps you get those domain cards down, which really only is one card, uh, which is, of course, the Leyline Binding. But that is just by itself gives you a Leyline Binding domain like that's amazing so you put those together along with the it's a six five 
And if you get enough Overlord attacks in, you're just swimming in mana. You don't even need to worry about playing lands anymore. <laughs> you're just getting lands forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Well, speaking of which, and you were talking about this earlier, Kuro, the Guardian of Garifers on the Beza. This is amazing. But suddenly, well, Stacy says, uh-uh, you didn't say the magic word. <laughs> but it could have been a really cool ability. I'm just saying, I really like that idea within this Mono White Token Control deck. Uh, Caretaker's Talent activating the level 2. It's obviously going to target the treasure, which is fine. Stacy could strongly considering playing removal for this treasure to prevent Haster from drawing a card. Oh, that is what she is going to do. Oh no, the Overlord goes away. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Yes, Caretaker Talent though draws two cards off of that, and now suddenly <laughs> we have more bricks. This... And we have a get lost, and this is interesting. But is it going to be enough <laughs> to hold off Stacy's field, which again, as I was talking about earlier, is very much multiplying. <laughs> We have an issue here. If Haster plays Get Lost in that Leyline Binding, the Overlord comes back as a creature, which mm -hmm. Stacy then has to contend with. That's actually a huge problem. Uh, Stacy has to have exactly no more lies in the hand in order to deal with that. She's right. saying, I'm going to try to go for the win this turn. Wait, six. Oh, seven, okay. It's not okay. enough damage, but it's it's very much like oh. going to try to overcommit. Over but she's Sorry, letting so Haster draw so many cards right now with those tokens. Yeah. It makes me think, man, I, I hope Stacy has the win right now. Uh, this is exactly 18 damage coming in. So Haster needs to say, can I resolve this spell? And here we go. Haster says, get lost. It and does. the Overlord is getting lost right now. But two okay. cards off the top for Stacy. So let's see what they discard. A Sunfall. Well, yeah, of course, you don't want to wipe the field. That makes sense. But Hester would very much like to wipe the field right now. We'll see if Stacy drew a No More Lies in that draw. It almost doesn't matter. Hester is eight mana coming into this turn. So uh, she can pay for the No More Lies. It yeah. literally doesn't matter. I was thinking of so two No More Lies, but nah, nah. Stacy didn't have enough mana to cast two no more lies yeah. um, at that time. So it's really only a matter of, well, can Stacy get back after the sunfall? Does Stacy have an Atraxa to work with? And will Haster build it bigger and build it better? Let's see. <laughs> you love Please. those those bricks. I want the bricks. I want oh, okay. the bricks down. I want the bricks. No! I wanted the bricks. Well, I wanted them down. I'm sure that Haster has some kind of plan here. Back over to Stacy, though, which, again, does still have plenty of cards, plenty of a life advantage here. So we'll see if Haster can overcome the life de deficit, which, again, is probably the least important thing in a battle like this. You're battling for board state very much between these two decks. Yeah, Haster has an overlord in the hand, has a virtue of loyalty. Aww. That is an interesting frog. Hi, Helga. Hi, Atraxa! <laughs> I heard you like angels. I am going to make an angel right now. Well, who cares about angels about when there's a frog, though? Look at how cute Helga is. That's true. <laughs> we, all know that, we all know that Helga is the real reason that Stacey is going to win, because that 2-4 will take two turns to attack. It'll take three turns for Stacey to attack with that 2-4. Don't bother with the 7-7 seven, seven flyer. It's not really relevant. <laughs> Very strong turn here from Stacy, though. Again, we're talking about board state, and we do have a very strong established board state. However, yes. let's see, six, seven, and oh my gosh, that's going to be a lay down arms for seven planes on a track. So can you believe it, Kuro? Wow. You are now, you are now farmer. Wow. Have fun. Wow. Till the fields. <laughs> I cannot well, believe that. What's interesting though is that now Stacy's gonna untap and play another Overlord, which triggers the Helga, and the Helga themselves herself can go ahead and tap for other things as well. Haster is at risk of milling out if the game takes too long. I've seen this Wait, happen so no. many times. In this matchup. How many cards? It's are possible. In, how many cards are in both of their decks? I really wish we had access to this info. It's not even production's fault. It's more of an arena interface thing. I wish you could see that in the corner. 
I'm not entirely sure, but I think I would, if I had to estimate, they both probably have about 30 cards left based on the fact that both of them have been drawing tons of cards this game. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the fact that, okay, we were talking about Toby just creating sheer power for three, five power for three, right? We were talking about that earlier. How do you feel about Toby giving these tokens flying in this situation, Kuro? This is amazing. I had totally admittedly forgotten about that giving flying through, again, having cards in the yard. Hard. It's such a cool ability that it works for that. Oh, Ooh, not not floating okay. mana with that Helga before mm -hmm. casting Sunfall is a mm -hmm. really interesting choice. I think Stacy might have just simply forgotten to tap for the mana first, just in case. But it was a well timed uh, Sunfall. It was necessary. It needed to happen. Um, I mean, it happens to the best of us, right? We draw a cover like, oh my gosh, this changes the entire board state. Like that is that is such an that easy is true. thing to do. Like that's totally understandable. However, this overlord now, it, I feel like the the board is just flip flopping every turn, right, Kuro? Like, yeah, that, that's like, what Sunfall does. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh wow! This? this wow, wow! This binding that hit the Beza is getting the axe. That is how valuable Beza is right now to Haster because. It's not the Overlord that needs to go oh. away. It's the Beza that needs to come back. What is being... Oh, one of those. Okay. okay. Yeah, the second sense. copy of the Caretaker's yeah. Talent. Because every token Haster makes is an additional card. And Stacy's like, I can't just let you get away with this. Oh, how... Okay, so you gotta love this card, right? Eternal Wander. I feel like you have some love for this card, Kuro. I've never seen it before in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. I am being sarcastic. Uh, you know, Eternal Wanderer was a really good win condition, kind of secondary win condition when the when the Wandering Emperor was still in standard. Um, but realistically, one of the biggest issues with it is just just too expensive. Like yeah. it costs six, which is really like Overlord is more efficient technically because like, you can play it earlier. And it's true you can make a bunch of two two double strikes, but the board wipe thing, I wish that I kind of wish it just wiped the board. Keeping around one thing when you're playing control and you have no creatures is actually not that great. How um, about Overlord it, it's, of it's the a, Mythors it's a for seven? You said the Eternal Wanderer was too expensive for six. What about yes. Overlord of the Mismores for seven? Hard cast. How do you feel about that one? I think it's fine because it's a modal spell. So being four mana for a non creature or seven mana later makes it a lot more flexible. Because you can play it in the early game as sort of like this uh, blocker, right? You make two 2-1 two, blockers, and that's not a problem. Or if you draw it late game when you have a bajillion mana, like 17 million mana, then mm. it's also fine. Whereas, 17 like, million. 17 million. As we all know, <laughs> nine lands is the same as 17 million. So there's one card that I have on my radar right now, Kuro, and that is the Virtue of Loyalty that has been sitting in the adventure zone for so long. Do you think that card might oh have a huge impact? <laughs> These card draw is going insane. Um, I think the Virtue of Loyalty will be very valuable if a Toby enters the battlefield. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because then if all of the, if all of these tokens have flying and that virtue comes down, all of those flying tokens are gonna get extra buffs. And Stacy, I think, is gonna attack with the Overlord, right? Yeah, it's yeah. two more tokens. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that is an attack yep. from the Overlord here. So how will Haster respond here? Let's see what the blocking situation looks like. A singular block using the lifelink token. Very interesting choice here from Haster. Uh, maybe wanting a little more wiggle room on the life, maybe thinking about doing stuff with Eternal Wanderer. I'm interested to see what Haster's next turn looks like. Uh, tap land off the top, and yeah, we are going to be seeing the Eternal yeah, Wanderer. That's the, that's the closest thing to a really board wipe. Nice. Yep. A really nice Eternal Wanderer. You keep your little token. I will get the six six. That is huge. Um, that is that is huge for this for this game. Yeah. Uh, that's the one sided board wipe if I've ever seen one. And this is why Wanderer is a lot better in like tokens versus control because in tokens you have the Overlord down, you can get that damage through, and suddenly Stacy's sitting there like. Man, I actually have to deal with this stuff. <laughs> what do well, I this do? Is token, token control, right? Like that is very, right. very known in this. And again, there's the virtue. I was talking about that. I'm wondering if that's going to be an X factor in this match. Let's see what's in Stacy's hand right now. Uh, we still have an Overlord of the Mistmore on the side as well. Worth noting, uh, it's not animated this turn, but it is there. 
So we're going to see if Stacy can wipe the board again. It's been the theme of the match so far. But overall, um, looking at the Elspeth at seven as well, do you think we have a chance of seeing the ultimate, or do you think that's not what the Elspeth is meant for in this match? Uh, thinking about what is currently in the graveyard, uh, a lot of the removals that have happened on Stacy's side has been Sunfall. So I can't mm. think of a lot of these amazing targets for Haster. Um, just because, like, they, they cost three or less yeah. is what the things are. But they only get sent from the graveyard. And these Sunfalls have exiled so much stuff that I'm just sitting here. I'm like, I don't think there's anything to return. Like, yeah. unironically, making tokens is better. Uh, Stacy might even start playing the I'm going to just try to mill you out game to see how that works. Uh, we do have an Overlord of the Flood Pits, the blue Overlord that has hit the field. And yeah. now, wow, it just there's there's overlords everywhere right now. Is that is an overlord of the haunt? What's the green overlord? Yeah, this is a big problem. This Archangel Elspeth is now going to be able to give this overlord flying, uh, meaning that this is just something that uh, Stacey is going to have to deal with for the next forever and a half. I think a lot of this also stems from the fact that Haster was allowed to draw two cards from copying that one treasure token. If theoretically Stacy had played the uh, Leyline Binding on the treasure token, preventing that draw, this game might have gone completely differently. Uh, very creative use there of Eternal Wander, just permanently oh, gets rid of a token. And stuff. here's the minus six for the Guardian. Okay, okay, we what see are, you. What, what are we blinking? That's the question. It's so not it's probably going to blink the Overlord, right? Is it, like, is it Bix? Oh, Build it yeah. bigger! Build oh. it better! bricks here I'm, I'm curious i'm very very yeah. curious about this caretaker's talent looks like, like it's gonna multiply and make things bigger uh i i want to know how many cards are in both both players decks so badly right now there's just there's so much going on yeah this one is looking it's this one is looking like it's actually going to go in hoster's direction now because of the way mm -hmm. that these tokens are just huge um hoster's thinking i'm going to make this uh overlord an 8-8 eight eight so that if uh stacy multi-box it trades with both sure and those and those tokens are big enough to win the game so stacy also cannot multi-block this overlord carrot cake like, on top okay oh wait and... the four three can attack i'm silly <laughs> i don't know what things do oh that, oh that doesn't okay matter. That was quite a game. I, I have to give it to both players. That game was so back and forth on both ends here. GG's to both players. We head on into game two. Haster does take game number one. So what do you think needs to be done here from the sideboards? What stands out to you the most, Kuro, as to what's going to make game two a little more successful? We'll say for both players. Well, here's the problem with main decking so many overlords is that they're all enchantments. So main deck enchantment removal will be extremely good for you if you're playing against Overlord Tribal because you can just kill it. And it's like, well, that sucks. Guess I'll play a second one. Well, that sucks. Guess I'll play a third one. And it just it, it, the cycle just continues. So those Lorens are very nice. I guess so the Guardian Terra's Thunder. Here, yeah. Also very nice. I mean, it's not Terra's really Thunder's pretty here. good. Yeah. Yeah. If you're playing Control, like Get Out would even be good because it counters enchantment spells, mm -hmm. which is always mm -hmm. nice. But honestly, like the Lauren plus Guardian of Gearper is very nice because you play Lauren and then you blink it. Very cool. I also see Jace the Perfected Mind in the side yeah. deck. And I wonder if we're going to see that. I mean, we've actually seen an uptick of Jace the Perfected Mind being registered for decks just across the board in standard magic tournaments. And it feels like it has so much different value to it. Now, what do you think about this opener from Haster here? Looks like we have a lay down arms. Uh, parting gusts under the under the gateway, Toby. Seems pretty all right. Yeah, I'm not so sure about it, but it has a lot of <laughs> good early removal. The the only thing, well, there's there's planes. Uh, the only thing though is that um, Haster really needs to think about does uh, she those lay down ones are only useful for Helgas, right? The parting gust is also useful. I mean, you say it. that, but what happened to Attracts in the last game? That's true. That was like on turn. <laughs> Five, I was on turn 17 million, so... I was going to say on turn 500, right? <laughs> All right. On turn, uh, turn 8,425,928. Oh, my God. The power of 42. 
if you are Stacy, you love to see the green overlord on turn three producing an everywhere token. Gotta love it in a domain ramp deck. We're going to see how Stacy responds to Toby, aka where the wild things are, friend. That's another land. So that could play another overlord, actually. Like yeah. by another green one. And Haster starts to, has to start aggressively getting rid of these spells. But if Haster's entire hand is just removal, she's not playing cards to win the game. So this Archangel and Elspeth is going to be extremely important, I think. All right, let's see what gets played. Stacy passed the turn. Yeah. So no more lies, get lost, leyline bindings, and negates. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Probably negates, to be honest. She only has one blue source for these. Oh, wait, they have everywhere turn. I lied. She has two blue sources, so she can play two castles. All right, get lost on Toby here. Very interesting. We're going to see Ooh. a parting gust to save Toby. I love this move. Let's see. No more lives yeah. can be paid for. So what are we going to see here? No, it's it in a gate out of the sideboard. And yes. that get lost is going to go through. That is a huge, huge move for Haster here early in game number two. Also, welcome, everyone. I do like the Sunder on this. And, you know, the No More Lies would have been fine because it's pay three, not pay two. But making that 4-4 not attack because Toby is dead is actually quite nice. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's nice having creatures in the game that are literal canonical children, though. It's like if you kill them, you're like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, I play, I, I play this game where it's the optimal place to kill it. Anyway, uh, that's that's kind of unfortunate that the game is, the flavor of the game is like that. That's all I'm going to say. For everyone tuning in, this is the VML, the Venus and Mercury League. We are sponsored by Wizards of the Coast, and we are an 11-week-long MTGA league which showcases the talents of amazing people of marginalized genders within the Magic community. We are in the final week of Round Robin. This is week 7 of Season 13, and there's a lot of wild card and seeding action at stake here. So we're happy to have you all here, and we hope you enjoy the matches. So this Archangel Elspeth did not come down instead of Guardian of Gear Per to get that 3-3 blocker, which makes sense. Uh, this Laid on Arms is not cutting it right now because Haster has too many non-planes. That's kind of, that's really important, actually. She needs at least five planes to deal with these uh, uh, overlords. And if the white overlord comes down, oh well. Oh, well, that's an Atraxa, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I mean, I've heard Atraxa is a pretty okay card. I've heard it's also very okay, but yeah, so let's see what the Atraxa pulls. Looks like based on the revealed cards so far, it's a pretty good bounty full of cards. And Haster is running out of resources quickly. Now, I jokingly talked about the Atraxa being a thing for laydown arms. This is not nearly enough planes to fulfill that condition. Heck, it isn't even enough for the Overlord. Let's see what's off the top. And that is a Collector's Cage. Oh my god, that's actually hilarious. So the token gets animated and has three different powers. The cage boosts the 4-4. And then that is exactly enough to make it work. Oh no. Oh, 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 oh. what's going on? Okay, it is a that demolition is not, field. That is not what I thought was gonna happen. <laughs> well, right, what did you different. think was gonna happen? I'm I'm curious. I'm Wait, curious. Is that right? Oh no, the sun and citadel, right? Because the citadel pays for the cost. No, that's fine. That actually makes sense. So the ability is activated. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, okay, sorry. I thought that the two mana for the thing, but the Citadel always pays the two. That's, yeah. Me why I missed stuff. That's fine. Everything's fine. Would you like a free Overlord of the Mist Wars? Yes, yes, I would, actually. That seems like a lot. And that is a Ley Line oh, Binding. Yeah. Ley Line Binding gets rid of our poor Where the Wild Things Are token. And suddenly, Stacy Wilson untaps with an Overlord and and attracts out this is this is a tough situation for haster up the beanstalk draws an additional card we see a jace we see the overlord of the mist moors about to be played here this is this is going to be a lot for haster to handle unlimited resources yeah and it's really rough because even if this guardian of gear is sacked to kill the overlord haster needs two more creatures then to play the collector's cage like that Leyline Binding was the worst timing for the Leyline Binding. It needed to not happen. It was to the point that, like, almost Demolition Field giving Stacy that one mana 
was like what she really needed to be able to cast that. The oh. caster had just got made a creature, it would have been fine. Speaking of what you needed, get lost for that Atraxa is very clutch right now. Yeah, that is definitely not bad. All right, two get lost tokens here looking like Archangel Elspeth about to hit the field. And it just, it, here's the tough part. Was that too little, too late, Kuro? Because look at the number of cards and now the negate oh, from Stacy was gosh. that is a tough negate to face. And that is, again, Negate's kind of in the superstar here in game number two, coming out of Stacey Wilson's sideboard here. Bigger. Keeping the bricks. Better. Build it bigger. <laughs> Gonna get those tokens. <laughs> My co-caster, Kuro, here, loves the bricks because of the Bob the Builder love references. The bricks. <laughs> we, need, we need to build it bigger. We need the bricks <laughs> down. This is the way to victory, is to make a wall. Oh goodness. It's to make is to make tokens. <laughs> I just feel like the draw has not been here for Haster. You have yeah. to get the caretaker's talent like built up. You have to be I able was to do that. Just thinking, wow, it would have been really nice if she had a caretaker's talent this game. Yeah. Just need, like, four tokens now? You kinda have to draw them for them to do something, just saying. But Haster here hanging in here in game number two. And again, if Stacey Wilson wins, we will be going to game number three here. So it is still anybody's game. Fish. Fountain Port being activated for Haster for the block. Fish. But you can block and then sacrifice to draw a card. Okay, so we have a little bit of card drawing here. And I believe Haster's probably looking for some form of board wipe. That's not going to be it. Sunfall is probably the best possible thing that she can draw, but the problem is Stacey has these Jaces. Mm -hmm. So if Astro draws too many cards, like the Jaces will just kill. Um, oh my gosh, she's just milling. I mean, why not? Just, why not? Uh, holding up mana for other answers. Does Astro just die? I mean, maybe. Out. We, we don't know how many cards are in the yard. We'll see at the end of this. Oh my god. That... Not yet. Not yet, yeah. Of life, I think, maybe. So the laydown arms can be used on the Overlord, and it looks like... All fish. right, get a fish. Yep. Fish. <laughs> nah, Haster's looking for, for something, but now with only three mana available, yeah, Ooh. that's going to be it. We are going to game number three, a wild one here, between Stacy Wilson and Haster, and I cannot begin to express enough, Kuro, how much those negates we're a huge game breaker in this game. Yeah, there's so much stuff in the Bono White Tokens decks that's actually a non-creature spell to the point that Negate is almost like a really good four of against this deck. Like an Overlord cast for Impending, if I'm not mistaken, is also a non-creature spell, which means that it is very much eligible to be negated. Um, and Mono White means you're not playing counter of your own. So every counter war Stacy is going to win every counter war. So Haster has to play the card advantage before Stacy can do anything else. All right, we see a mulligan from Haster here heading into game number three. Again, we do not have Stacy's the knowledge of Stacy's hand at all. No duress is in this game. So we're kind of left in the dark here. But we are going to see a collector's cage come down on the hideaway five and <gasps> choosing Archangel oh. Elspeth for the hideaway. <laughs> what were you gonna were you thinking the sunfall? No, I saw the bricks and I got really excited. Oh, well, you always get excited <laughs> over the bricks. That's not news. <laughs> we want to build it bigger. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, oh no. no. Okay, so now we did. I was making fun of you for the bricks. The bricks would have been decent. That, it would have been good. They would have been amazing. <laughs> but honestly, the collector's cage getting the bricks doesn't do anything because the collector's yeah. cage needs three creatures with different powers. Uh, so Stacy's going to start getting lands here, card advantage, and Hass is going to stay here just kind of twiddling her thumbs, going, well, well, I guess I'll play a 2-2 Vigilance. And Stacy's like, well, I guess I'm going to play a 5-3 Flyer that draws me a card every single time I do something. And it's even more devastating 
during this uh, matchup in particular, right? You're playing against a ramp deck. They're going to keep getting their lands without a doubt. And when you don't draw lands, when you don't keep up with the lands there, that just makes the situation even worse than your average matchup. You know, let's say it was an aggro mirror or something like that. So this is really, really rough position for Haster. And it, again, it's nobody's fault. This is just the way the magic works. And we have our third land. We have our third land for Haster. But the question is, uh, Kuro, is it too late? now we love to see the caretaker's talent and the good news is that stacy's deck is slow enough that if haster lucks into drawing enough lands for that sunfall it might be okay oh well never mind that's a <laughs> no more caretaker's talent for you i guess that's unfortunate that's also unfortunate gosh this is so much value i kind of love this helga being a five copies five to eight of up the beanstalk is so nice is so so nice and again just the base it would have been nice here but again it's just not enough land so again using the map here to try to get something going here that's a get lost on the top oh. that's not going to work well for haster she is very much looking for another land and there's there it one. is that's now good. That's a, can that's a start. get rid of the helga here that is a start but Again, yeah. this is this is an uphill battle for Haster. It is, but it's not unwinnable because was Stacy only has six lands, which <laughs> I know only six, but like <laughs> with the deck that she's playing, she wants like ten lands at least to be on the battlefield, right? And Haster's yeah. sitting there with four lands, but Beza will draw a card. Kajajika's tech cat talent could potentially draw a card. Parting Gust can blink the Beza to get more value. So Haster has enough stall to stay in the game. It's just a matter as to whether she can amass the resources to take advantage of it. All right, more Overlord action here as the Haunt Woods enters. Now, Beza's attempted to be played. Does Stacy have the counter spell? Nope. So uh, Beza draws a card and again, it's a land. Land's not too bad right now. Uh, the Ooh, cage. this cage can. Yes. It can activate because it's yes. fish. Yes. yes. Unless, yeah, it resolves. That's really good, actually. Ooh. Aster needed that. All right. Is there a negate? No. Okay. Decides Archangel. not to go for it. Okay. And that is. We're back in business. Get lost on the Archangel. That's okay, though. There is a Caretaker's Talon and a Sunfall still in Haster's hand. So, again, Catching up, right? Look at the resource management now. Granted, Haster's only on five lands, but considering how this match started, this is a very good recovery for Haster. I agree. If this was playing against, like, mono-red aggro or red-white enchantments or something like that, it would have been an extremely different matchup, and the game would probably have already been over. But because Stacey's deck is just so, like, it's so slow in its snowballiness, uh, there is a chance. Haster has a chance. All right, you so this attract is... Yeah, yeah, go on. The attracts that feel scary when you play against it, but the Parting Gust and Sunfall can both deal with it. Parting Gust exiles the creature overall and just gives them a 1-1 one -one if you decide to gift them a fish. So this attracts that could just die and it's not even a problem. It's a matter of if Haster can take advantage of what's going on. Or Stacey can just draw a negate. That also works. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> well, literally right there. Yeah. I would be tempted to not even block. Because if you can blink the Beza, you want to gain more life, you know? Oh, yeah. So there's a couple possibilities here for Haster. There could be a parting gust maybe on the Atraxa is one way to do it, to try to draw the negate out and then maybe respond with the caretaker's talent. The only problem is that Atraxa is still going to be tough to deal with. It is. Haster has a lot of life gain, though. I'm not actually that worried about Atraxa. The thing that would be worrying is if Stacy gets down another Overlord of the Mismores after the Sunfall resolves. That will be the biggest problem. Well, there is an Overlord kind of looming in the background. Yeah, if I'm Stacy here and you kill the Atraxa, I'm like, Helga's the thing that draws me cards, so mm -hmm. it's fine that Atraxa's gone. Caretaker Talent is the thing that draws you cards, so I need this to be gone. So Stacy's making evaluations based on what is drawing her cards versus what big beaters there are. Haster can easily attack for eight for free 
but it's not the correct play because Hasso needs to deal with the card advantage that Stacey is developing. Yeah, and again, this is where the slow start is catching up with Haster again. Notice all the cards here that Stacy has been drawing all match. And now look at the ratio. And, and again, we don't talk about the advantage or even, you know, who's winning or who's losing, depending on the life total. Here, I'd say it's based on even the hand state now more so than the board state. If Haster gets rid of the board, the board can easily be populated again like Stacy. Haster does not have that same luxury. Yeah, when you're playing against decks that have a lot of value and a lot of like value engines, uh, the thing you really should be paying attention to are the amount of lands they have and the amount of cards in their hand, uh, especially when you're playing against control decks. So as Haster seeing this thing is going, my only out here is to play Sunfall and have it resolve. And then even then, Stacy has tons of cards in her hand. She could probably just recast all the stuff. Um, but the Sunfall is pretty pretty juicy right now, I'd say. It is. We're going to uh, see if it can be played. Nine, eight. Yeah, it needs to come down. Yeah, like, you, you have too to. too much of a board state. All right, here comes the Sunfall. It looks like there's, yeah, I yeah. mean, too many cards were drawn, right? Too many cards were drawn for that not that to is be. It? That is the negate. And I want to say, I do not say this often, Crow, but the card of that match was negate. Like, as soon as those yes. negates were in the board, Stacy dominated there. So, again, GG's to both players. Fantastic games. It is unfortunate that Hastert had a little bit of a slower start in game three in terms of, like, land and being able to draw. But the domain deck was just too powerful. Just was more able to draw cards and more reliably than having to rely on a caretaker's talent. So... It's a rough match, really, for Mono White Token Control. It's possible, but once those negates are in and you keep drawing and you have the negate and the Jason there, it gets tough from there. Any final thoughts on that match, Kara? Uh, build it bigger, build it better. We can do it. <laughs> I of think course. the fact that, the, I mean, the fact that Mono White can't win a counter war is unfortunate. Like, that's sort of, it is what it is. The late on arms being, unfortunately, not the helpful unless Helga specifically comes down, at least in, like, the early game means that a hand that has higher removal is just not able to sort of deal with the card advantage that the domain deck is having, because all the removal is creature removal. Um, yeah. Cool Indeed. match. I like it. The Overlord Travel, I really like that deck. I want to see it more. I want to see more of the Red Overlord. I feel like the Red Overlord's amazing. Yeah, it's hard to put it in a shell. It costs four or six. And aggro decks do not want that. Mm -hmm. All expensive. right. Well, we have two more matches here of magic action here in week seven of the VML. Again, this is standard. Let's take a look at our next matchup. And we have legs and they are on Golgari midrange. Again, we saw this deck earlier with autumn just fall a little bit short against a mirror mid, but still fantastic deck. We saw this deck played at worlds this weekend as well, or some variation of it. And we have all the standard stuff in here. Archfiend of the Dross, Moss with Dread Knight, Tranquil Frillback now making a comeback because of that enchantment removal. So overall thoughts on this deck, anything look different from the first one we saw tonight? Uh, not much. Uh, there's a Sentinel of the Nameless City in here. That's pretty cool. Gets you some map tokens, uh, but it's pretty much the same stock uh, list as the last one. Uh, the thing that's going to matter is this matchup, which is wild, by the way. I love this matchup. I'm really excited to see it. Let, I, it's hard to talk about it without seeing the next deck list and why it's so interesting. Sure, yeah, and I want to get to that right away. So let's go into the opponent, and we have <laughs> Demir Mill. Again, not something you see every day, but again, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. So this is this is Jay Z Jaws here on Demir Mill. Of course, Jace, a popular one amongst the mill, and even the non-mill decks, as we saw in the last match, Jace can go pretty much anywhere. So, okay, I want to know why you're laughing, Kuro. What, what do you got? This is a combo deck, and the combo is to get Jace down and have it have at least two loyalty. Okay. Then you play you play Doomsday Excruciator, mill their entire library until six cards, and then Jason kill them. Oh, um, this deck. This, and this deck. And the, okay. The, okay. Whole, the, whole, the whole point of this deck is to stall the game and make sure Jace doesn't die you either play Doomsday Excruciator, then mill them and kill them, or you play the Excruciator first, pass the turn, 
go back to your turn, play adjacent, kill them. That's that's the combo, right? And the entire deck, every single card in the deck is meant to get you to that point. Now, this Golgari midrange deck has removal in it. This removal is useless because there are no creatures in this mill deck that really matter. Mm-hmm. I guess the restless reef might matter occasionally, but like it's really the Jace thing. And yeah, it's 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 <laughs> this is a completely different dimension of play, I think. So I do also want to mention and thank you, Chad, for mentioning something. JC Jaws is also from Team Spirit. A lot of Team Spirit in the matches tonight. Again, that is one of our playtesting groups. So thank you so much again for joining the playtesting group. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing the match. And again, this is the combo deck that is important to note from Kuro. And let's go down to the action. And whew, this is another heavy hitting matchup. Two five ones facing off. So again, seeding here is going to be very, very, very important in this match. And oh, we have a double hand cam here. So that is going to be great news for folks following along. And these are both very land hands <laughs> to say the least well jay-z jaws is a control combo deck i say it's a combo deck but it's basically every single control deck you can think of is actually a combo deck just that just wins very slowly um jay-z jaws is sitting here with this hand going this is great i want this hand because it has all lands it has two board wipes so if legs plays a duress it's not a problem uh and it has a counter spell for the early game so basically has everything they could ever want that's pretty good Legs looks at this and goes, oh, come on. Two board wipes, really? <laughs> I, can't, I can deal with one, not two. <laughs> so what do you even take here? Do you take the counter spell instead, or do you have yes. to take... Okay, yep, that's exactly yeah, you... what Legs decided to do. Probably with a heavy sigh, if I were to assume. But, yep, gonna see an exchange of lands for a couple turns here. That's an anoint that goes into Jay-Z Jaws's hand. And we're going to see, yet again, the 3-3 three, three just... Taking, Vanilla. taking a does, seat does nothing and so jay like i don't even know if i kill this like yeah, yeah why bother killing it you know legs here in a difficult situation because you probably don't want to play too much too much board presence when you have so few there is the fountain sport though so the land of war waste could go down here and start making some tokens the Fountain Port is definitely nice. The shield you're coming down is very threatening to Jay-Z Jaws, but the Deadly Cover-Up makes it not a huge issue. Um, uh, for a couple turns, it might be. For a couple turns. The Roof comes yeah. down, which isn't a huge issue because the Demolition Field is there. So Yeah, but, but the Reef doesn't exist to win the game. The Reef exists as like sort of an alternative means. The main combo, of sure. course, is the case. Sure, and legs sure. is legs is breaking a lot actually. This is a lot of lands, and Jaws is just going. Yeah, for, I'll take it. A lot of lands for both players. Again, less of an issue for uh, JC Jaws than it is for legs. But already down to eight. Worth noting here. So that deadly cover up does have to hit the field. But I, I believe we will see a fish in our near future. Fish, 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 fish. <laughs> Oh, Archery to the draws. Very interesting. nice. Interesting. So here's the here's the drawback to playing Archfiend. It's just gonna get deadly cover up again. But is that a problem? Hmm. It might be. If the Archfiend comes down this turn and then Jay-Z Jaws plays another deadly cover up, then legs untaps with no creatures and no attackers. Yeah. Which could be an issue. Legs might be looking at this matchup and thinking, unironically, the best way to win is to get these fish down. And Jay-Z Jaw says, wow, what if I played Jace and bricked your fish? Because yeah. remember, all Jay-Z all Jay needs is to untap with a Jace that has at least two loyalty. If Jay-Z untaps and draws a Doomsday extract, uh, Excruciator, I think Excruciator, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excruciator, yeah, it you. is an instant win. It is an instant win. Right, yeah, yeah. right away. Like, it's tough at this so cool. point because part of the problem is is that Lays's nearest path to victory is to just get rid of the last five life. Like that's the way you go. But the problem is, yes. is now, as you were saying, that Jace is just bricking, bricking this board state hard, and Legs sees the deadly cover up, doesn't even know about the anointer the deduce here, and suddenly Jay Z is in a very 
dominating position in this game and legs draw opting to sack and draw the card instead wow okay maybe demolitioning field the the reef there's two reefs it isn't worth doing that now um, you want to demolition field the reef when they first activate it that way you're making them waste mana and mm -hmm. you can get that value with the reef but legs is sitting here like I could lose lands. at any legs legs has to be sweating right now. They're mm -hmm. thinking I can literally lose any turn if Jaws just draws the excruciator. Yeah. Um like and there's nothing that can be done about it. So Yeah. Kind of just gotta go all in, honestly. Legs has no way, no easy way to get rid of this Jace. I say that because, again, the deadly no. cover-up is known in the hand. And going for the deduce, just going to go for the win, because why worry if you can just win, right? Uh, three steps ahead, drawn by Jay-Z Jaws, so pretty good here. This hand overall is looking very good. That's a spell dryer that was just drawn. Is there anything that can stop Jay-Z at this point? Is there anything that Legs can draw in this current 60 that can make a difference? Children would probably do it, actually. Preventing okay. Jay-Z from drawing into answers. Uh, if Jay-Z uses this last deadly cover to deal with the Archfiend, then that could be really bad, actually. So Jay-Z's thinking... Can I risk plusing this Jace, turning this Archfiend into a three power creature to hold up a counter spell? Um, just no. Hmm. Or Jace is like, uh, uh, yeah, Jace is thinking, I'm going to draw a card, maybe get into a Doomsday Excruciator. No, that helped nope. out Lynx more than anything. Did you see what went in the yard, Curl? Uh, I think it was a creature in the land or something like that. It was, was... a Lily of the Veil, vale too, just all stuff that wouldn't yeah. help Legs out right now. Yeah, so I think Jay-Z Jaws is just thinking, I'm going to play this deadly cover-up, I'm going to collect evidence, and I'm going to take away all copies of Shieldred. Yeah, just to ensure yeah. that Legs cannot just play a Shieldred and win the game. Because Jay-Z Jaws cannot deal with a Shieldred right now with the cards that they have in their hand. Uh, yeah, deadly cover-up being one of the better uh, blackboard wipes that we've ever seen throughout Magic's history, yes. especially with that collect evidence. It's It's so many good cards tied into one here. Yeah, yeah. Shieldreds are gone. There's mm -hmm. two Shieldreds in the deck, I think. Yeah, there's two Shieldreds in the deck. It's still worth getting rid of them because that's the one card that will lose you the game. Yep. So Mossfoot Dread Knight off the top, not too bad here. Can draw a card, can play a creature. Yeah. Too many lands dice. here again. The, the, the lands are real here for legs. Yeah, the dice to anoint the procession. And the worst part is that you could be thinking, man, I could just plus Jace on the Dread Knight and play anoint the procession on the uh, token like mm -hmm. <laughs> this dead dread knight does not even have to be killed per se and jaws is now untapping with counter spells removal and lands this is the part of the control deck that like locks down the game so the question now is how long is it until jaws gets the win con and again there's just there's so much going for jaws right the counter with three steps ahead the spell gyre like the go for the throat like there's just all any kind of threat Seems all but eliminated here, especially with the shield for it gone now. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, and Jaws now has basically an answer for anything that Legs could have. Jaws is realizing like Legs has two cards in hand. Oh, but Legs definitely has a cut down. This cut down is basically nothing. Uh, the card it, does not matter in the slightest. It could be something. So so hear me out. Oh sure, go the for cut it. down on the night draws you an extra card now mind you again legs that's doesn't true. know what's in the hand anymore but that is one way in which it could be used though yeah like i'm just again thinking out loud here you are correct actually i i, I neglected about that um cut down your own dread knight in response to being exiled is a completely uh valid and legitimate play uh that yeah. allows you to recycle the dread knight unfortunately it's very very slow and oh, yeah. uh, you need to deal those last four points of damage but how about, the cottage? The in hand. Hmm? Oh, How about cottage? the cottage? If it wasn't for the oh, no. for the throat, the cottage yeah. is interesting. Jaws is too much removal. Oh, going for no. it. No. Uh, there's no. There's mm. no uh, unfortunately, at this point in the game, there's no reason to attack Jace because Jace just needs to be a two yeah, um, or higher. That's what I was thinking. Uh, taking it from five to four is not really relevant, um, unfortunately. It's the taking it from two to one that matters the most. Yeah, here gyre. comes Spell Gyre. Or 
spelled gyre. Oh, well, that's it. The game is over. Well, we get to see your combo play out. Yes. Yes. The combo is here. Curly I like loves. control. <laughs> oh, it, it has been noted that you like control. <laughs> This is such an interesting way to play control. I absolutely love like that excruciator is getting some play here. Mm -hmm. And it is like the 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 symmetrical effect is obviously not symmetrical. <laughs> so uh welcome to everyone from the raid again. This is the VML, and we are playing some standard right now, and we are in the wild card week right now. So this is one of the most exciting weeks to watch in the VML. As a reminder, we are sponsored by Wizards of the Coast, and we are an 11 week long MTGA league, which showcases the talents of amazing people of marginalized genders within the magic community. I'm Sky Bills and along here, co casting, we have Kuro. So it is wonderful to have you all here. And here's the combo. Do it. <laughs> Minus two. I like Minus how Lakes is sitting through this and not scooping. I love this. You know, I love to see the combo actually play out here. It's for content, you know? Thank you, Lakes. Hey, and there it is. Hey. And we, we get to see the deck animation. Oh, yeah, yeah, Oh, that's yeah, yeah. so cool. The skull. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What a cool deck. I love this. This is such an interesting matchup. I want to see Legs draw more stuff besides lands. Like, that was entirely an outrageous <laughs> fault. I, no, I've had matches like that. You play hard, you play tough all season, and then that happens. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> And so you play hopefully. against a blue-black control deck that mills you out with one combo, and you're like, well, but bends the brakes. On the flip side, it was really cool seeing the combo. And again, thanks to Lakes for playing yes. it on. Thanks to JC Jaws for showing us that, because that was cool. That was very cool. So obviously Legs is thinking, get rid of my removal. It's all useless. Get in stuff that like actually deals with the hand. Those duresses are amazing. Uh, the Cruel Claws heist is actually pretty good, too. Um, I need to remind myself what that even does. Uh, you, oh, if you give them a card, you can cast the thing that you take. So really, it's just there to take another card from the hand. Like that's the only thing that matters, really. I think. Yeah, I was just thinking about how this could be managed. The Nissa, the Nissa is a really nice add. I actually think the Nissa would be good here if it can hit. Even one Nissa makes a big difference. We do see a shield right here out of the sideboard. There's okay now. I. <laughs> Now I see other ways in which this deck can win after looking at JC Joss's sideboard. We see, is, is, that, a, is that a shark I see up there? <laughs> it is, in fact, a Sharknado, yes. Not in the traditional sense, but it's no. definitely a Sharknado. It's I, do, I do kind of miss the, the Sharknado. Shark Typhoon's a fun card. <laughs> that is true. I mean, imagine Shark Typhoon in a deck like this, like, woof. <laughs> He's so good. But yeah, uh, very much like this match so far. Just trying to think about any other cards that could be used here. And again, I, I like I like being in the tank with the sideboard, being able to take in the sideboard for a little bit longer, see what's going on. But yeah, yeah, Reef is also a shark too. Yep. Literally, the sharks are all over the place. All right. I actually like what I see from both hands here. I don't think any hand here is done. Oh, then we see a double take. So this is great here. Get ready for game number two. Legs versus Jay-Z Jaws. Jay-Z Jaws winning game number one. And we see a Bronco enter play here. That is a very strong start in this matchup to get the Caustic Bronco out right away because Legs is going to need all the draw that they can muster. Yeah, this Bronco needs to die. Um, Jaws does not want legs drawing answers. Oh, well, I guess it is going to be allowed to live. That's fair. Maybe the Phantom Interference is what they're trying to think of for the, like any potential Lilianas. I can see it. Yeah. Uh, Glissa yeah. going to hit the board here, which means Annoying will likely have to hit the Glissa. I think so. I mean, you want to yeah. save the Interference for a potential Enchantment or Planeswalker or even a Shieldred. His children cannot be killed with annoyed with affliction. That's a huge, mm -hmm. uh, huge setback. Blind yeah. spot. It's it's yeah. a huge blind spot for the deck. So, Jaws is like, okay, the Sunsayer is fine. I'm gonna play annoyed to kill it right now. The Caustic Bronco is still gonna draw cards. Oh, are they going for the Bronco? Oh. Or yeah, are they? yeah, yeah, so. okay. yeah, yeah. He oh. goes for the Bronco. Okay, okay. 
Oh, because the Jace neutralizes the Glissa because it needs to deal damage. Yes, what a fantastic that play. That makes that yeah, makes that's more good. Sense. That's very good. Oh my God, Sky, what are you saying? Why are you cursing this legs? Is not Why my are you fault. making legs draw this many lands? This, this is, is crazy. This is not my fault. No, I'm no, sure. I'm pretty sure you called it. Me. I'm pretty sure you said, and I quote, oh, "Man, I sure hope legs draw seven bajillion trillion gazillion uh -huh. lands." Ever. Oh uh -huh. my God. This is not my fault. <laughs> is that right? A likely hey. story. <laughs> That's what they all say. <laughs> Under City Sewers being played for JC Jaws. Uh, seeing if we get the surveil or not. I would, again, we don't have a great view of the yard and above, so we'll see. Perhaps Wicket's put in there. There is a decision being made right now. We just don't see what it is. Looks like a go for the throw to the yard. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not. It's not in the yard. It's still on the top. That's actually really good. Oh, it's good. still on the top. Okay. Okay. Jaws really wants those go for the throats because those two cottages are going to cause some huge problems if they're allowed to live. Um, mm -hmm. If Legs is allowed to get that demon also, that's a huge problem. So Jaws is like, I need to play around the demon room. I need to play around these uh, actors. Uh, activated lands like the deadly cover-up is also a factor right now it is and it isn't legs doesn't really have a board state worth board wiping right now not yet but Jace but is... we're looking at that demon right now that's in the lock yeah as well i don't think i don't think jaws wants to allow legs to draw a card and gain life with the annex at the moment mm-hmm and that's not going to happen anyway. I don't uh, want to hear it. God. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Okay. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> no comment. Oh, I don't think is, you would. This Dread Knight could get countered. Could. At a certain point, Jaws is to think about, do I counter this with the interference now just so that I can counter something? Because that go for the on the top means Shieldred is now something that they can deal with. It's yeah. not a huge problem anymore. Um, <laughs> do the funny of attack again. Oh my god. So anyway, this Jace is probably going to keep locking down Glissa. Uh, <laughs> and those two removal spells are keeping things oh. nice. Now, if the there wasn't center... a second Jace in hand, this would be huge. Yeah, although killing the Jace, I think, is still correct, because if Jaws is holding an Excruciator right now, like, they can just win the game if they draw Swamp, right? So yeah. if, if from Legs' POV, you're thinking about this game, you're thinking about the way that the deck wins, and you're like, they're on five mana. I have to make sure uh, that they don't get to six. Keeping the Lily on top. Thoughts? Uh, I like it. Like um, it. It's risky okay. though, because if, if the Jace lives, the only oh wait, never mind, because you can draw it in immediately with the annex. Okay, that's fine. But still, no thoughts issue. though, thoughts. I wanna I wanna hear about your perspective on that one. Right, right. Uh, so everything discarded is good for legs because they have so many lands. It's actually not a huge problem. The discarding is not an issue. The real issue is keeping this Jace alive, right? So, um, which is probably not going to happen anytime soon. This Lily can't be countered. So if it is allowed to ultimate, like the amount of lands that legs can make Jaws sacrifice is probably going to cause a lot of problems. Hanging out um, of the Terra Sunder as well, not getting rid of Jace. That's also very interesting to me. Yeah, this Jace is at seven. It's getting really close to just milling for a bajillion. Yeah. And then the next Jace comes in and draws three cards, which is honestly pretty insane. Um, All right, but here comes Lily. Uh, Terra Sunder is still open as well, and now you just discard all your lands, right? <laughs> I mean, that's the way to go here. I think I discard, if I'm lit, Jaws, I discard Deadly Cover up here. Uh, I don't think it's as useful right now, because Legs yeah. is not committing creatures to the board. And I think Jaws, Jaws is probably thinking, wow, Legs is holding all of the other creatures so that I don't kill it. And Legs is thinking, I surely hope. Oh! oh! That swamp! That swamp was needed! Oh, wait, but maybe Jaws is thinking, maybe I'll use Jace and draw a card? Oh, no, Jace is still going to lock that down. This is this is juicy. This just got very juicy. So now, Glissa being locked down. I'm going to use the Terra Center? No! Oh. No. 
Really? No. This terrace under is waiting a million years. Oh, you know what? I like this. Well, mm, yeah, yeah, I'm listening. What what do you got for us? It seems to me that what Legs is doing is Legs is waiting for the excruciator to come down and then tear us under the Jace in response to the excruciator. That way, uh, Jaws can't win the game at that exact moment. Oh, um, good point. Which I think is a play that works. Unfortunately, it doesn't really play around a Jace existing and being active. Yeah. Um, I think this Liliana is unironically going to be like a huge cornerstone in this game to kill Jaws and just strip away all of their lands. Well, yeah, that's that is certainly one way. I I ultimated a Lily against a domain deck at one point. Totally valid strategy because you remove the lands, they can't do anything, right? Like staying the obvious, but it's still something you don't consider until it's there. You know, lands are used to cast spells. They are. They are. That's what I've been told. <laughs> I love the way Legs is playing this game. And again, Jay-Z doing the best he can do right now, too, given this, you know. Again, lands are the lifeblood of a control deck. And I do believe that Jay-Z yes. deck is like a control slash combo deck. So without those lands, believe it or not, these land draws are working out for Legs. So here's the other scary thing. Uh, that it's life loss is adding up, Kuro. It is. That is kind of a problem. And... There's a really interesting... Oh, that cavern is very nice. There's an mm. interesting thing to say here about that excruciator coming in and legs milling out because of the room. Oh, that room is mandatory. Yeah. yeah. And Terror Asunder specifically says... Okay, so Terror Asunder can kill the room, but the Terror Asunder must be used for the Jace. Oh, Jaws... Is doing calculations. Did you know that there's free online calculators? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's what's okay, the calculation? For? I am not judging you, JC. I thought that made for good stream content. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> Jaws is thinking, what if I just ultimate Jace now, mill 24 cards, ooh, ooh, okay. and then all right, all right. and then play Jace normally and mill 15 more cards. Okay. And does that does that win the game? Well, I mean, that might just win the game. It might. It might. And it would be a good way to do it. We don't know how many cards are on the decks, though. Like, we don't have that knowledge here as commentators, so. Because Legs has been drawing an extra card with that Unholy Annex for, like, six turns now. And so if you start with seven cards, and you draw six, that's 13. And you draw six more from the Annex, that's the, that's. 19? I think no, there was 24. some math done. I, you know, well, I joked about it. I think there was some math done. Is that Oh my it? god, that, that's, that's it. it. That's it. Wow. There's no more cards. Wow. The Jace should have been killed a mile. Oh my god, the Jace stinking around was the thing that, that's so unfortunate. Oh my <laughs> gosh. What a game. What a, what a cool deck. That was awesome. <laughs> Yay, control representation. Yay. That was. That was mighty. That was absolutely mighty. What a deck. Again, GG's by both players, though, honestly. Just solid all around. Enjoyed the games. Thank you to both players just for a fantastic game. You certainly don't see something like that every day, especially in a standard when when this VML season started. All I saw was aggro mirrors, which as much as I love aggro, I don't want to see nothing but aggro mirrors. No, nobody wants to see nothing but aggro mirrors. So I'm glad we are seeing more of a deck variety like this. So again, thank you so much, y'all for that fantastic game and we still have one more game left to go carol you want to say something real quick i'm gonna give you the floor for a sec no it's fine i just really <laughs> like that deck i'm gonna have to start <laughs> testing it myself it it, it it makes me feel very happy i need to see if well there's no blue white version that works but i could try the demir version i really like it. i am so sorry you can't play azorius i will apologize for that one <laughs> it's not good in the format i'm so sad so i have to watch other people play azorius Oculus instead just to make me happy all right well we're gonna go on to our last match let's see what our final week seven match has for us we have mono white token control there you go more control this is a perfect week for you Kuro, to be doing commentary by the way Faye katra has a 6-0 record so congratulations on getting this far that is phenomenal and we again are seeing mono white token control this one has enduring innocence in it and i believe that card was absent in the last one Kuro. Yeah, Enduring Innocence is kind of like a Caretaker's Talent 2. Um, it, it triggers on most of the things that Caretaker's Talent triggers on, which are the 1-1 one, one 
uh, bingles that you get with like the carrot cake and the Elspeth and the Beza. Uh, but the cool thing about Enduring Innocence is that it also uh, triggers itself. So you play an Innocence and then you play a second Innocence and you draw a card. You play third Innocence, you draw another card. And the next turn you play carrot cake and you draw two cards. And that's really, 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 really nice. So the engine should be pretty good here. Absolutely. And phase opponent is none other than Rune Claw Beric with Golgari Midrange. Again, very popular, very tried and true deck here. And this one appears to be, oh, Skeleton Land Crimes, but actually is the name of the deck here, according to my records. And we have the Iridescent Vine Lasher being used here. I like this list a lot. This may be something I have to try at some point. What are your thoughts, Crow? This is very different from the Golgari decks we've seen in the past. This is the deck that puts the phrase, be gay, do crimes to shame. Um, I see. This <laughs> this feels a little similar to most Golgari lists that you'll see. However, there's actually a lot of extremely major differences. Um, a lot of cards you don't normally see in standard. The Vine Lasher is one of them. The Deep Root Wayfinder is always very nice. Free Strider Lookout. You have a lot of basically landfall engines. That's what this deck is. It's landfall. That's why Escape Tunnel is a two of in the deck. Uh, and it's a landfall uh, com committing crimes deck, which I actually think is really, really cool. Um, and you just have a lot of synergy to create value in a very unique way that isn't normally done with Golgari, but I'm really excited to see it in action. Yeah, and let's see how these two decks clash. And again, it may look the same as a previous match, but honestly, again, very different. We're seeing different variations in these lists, and that's one of the best things about Extended Standard here. So Rune Claw playing for a spot in the playoffs here at 4-2, and uh, Katra playing for the coveted 7-0. So we'll see what starts here. Katra looking like Faye has a very good starting hand here. Lay down arms, get lost. Uh, two of the caretakers talent in here. And Rune Claw also mulligans. Looks like a very good start for Katra, given that Faye can draw, there it is, another land. Yeah, Katra needed that land. Uh, Fair hand did not have the second the second planes, but now that it does, like the Enduring Innocence can get value. Uh, the Caretaker's Town can be cast. Uh, all those things can get value. And this Wayfinder is about to hit the uh, Banish Zone, as they say, aka the Graveyard. I was going to say, I hadn't heard that one, but I like it. Uh, <laughs> looks like um, maybe the Caretaker's Town or the uh, Enduring Innocence. Both are pretty valuable here. The Enduring Innocence is probably slightly more vulnerable, given that it's a creature, but just have to watch out for that Exile. Well, it's worth mentioning, well, Barrage doesn't uh rune cloud is there no doesn't really have there, there's no anoint with procession it's go okay. for the throat cut down shoot the share of virt virtual persistence so uh the enduring innocence is very nice here because katra cannot it will not die well it will die but it will come back uh, uh rune does not have a way to permanently kill it oh Terra really thunders in is the it? sideboard but that's yes yeah, in the sideboard yeah, yeah. which are going to be sided in i'm already predicting it now oh well Runeclaw's gonna side in those Terra thunders you think <laughs> <laughs> uh actually no i changed my mind i don't think oh, i don't oh. think you will all right i think you'll right. just decide not to play enchantment removal for no reason <laughs> uh would hits the field and again uh this lay down arms here is it gonna be pretty clutch early on this is a card you do want to get exiled and lay down arms does just that so we are probably going yeah. to see a lay down arms uh hold the the fountain sport here or play the caretaker's talent that's also a good idea because the next turn you can get that draw train rolling between the enduring innocence and the caretaker's talent back over to ruin claw and we are going to see some skeleton crimes we were talking about skeleton crimes before and there it is down the center for three meanwhile catra down the hill for two lifelink and now are we going to see the second caretakers or are we going to see a fish for two draw here that's this is an interesting one. I think it'll be a fish because that'll draw two cards, which is pretty insane for Ketcha. Uh, because mm -hmm. Fanny re really needs like those that draw. Uh, Runeclaw has some stuff happening. The stuff does have haste, which is very nice. Oh, yeah. Um, but the Enduring Innocence Life Link might prove to be very clutch here. All right. Escape tunnel here, getting broken for a land. It's going to be a swamp. You know what this means? That's hmm. a descend. It sure is. That's really cool value, actually. I really oh, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Gonna Fish. return something to the hand, double draw. Sunfall, not bad here for Catra. Uh, Sunfall, really good against skeletons, it turns out. Oh, and that is a Beza off the top, also for Catra. We're likely gonna oh be God. seeing the second uh, Caretaker's Talent, unless Catra sees something with Beza. I guess you have one less card in hand here, but you're gonna have more creatures on board. So I guess you get life in a in a card. Maybe. Rukal plays a removal spell on this Beza right now, then the catcher will not draw a card, which I think Rukal really needs to happen. So I suspect a removal spell, but I don't know if Rukal has the go for the throat. Right, right. And even if this does happen, remember the fish can be copied with the um, with the caretaker's talent, so there's still a two-card draw possible here. Let's see what happens. I think Rukal is strongly considering killing the fish so that it can't be copied by the uh, caretaker's talent. That mm -hmm. way, uh, Catcher can draw the Beza trigger. The That's creatures are equal. Go for the throat on a fish! That I, makes sense. I, it does, yeah. but wow. That's all I can say about that is wow. <laughs> That's a good move. This, yeah. You did not want to have a second fish token. Uh, no. That was that would be disastrous. But now this base is a big 4-5 that's going to break everything. So the question is, how do you push through that? I don't know. This is tough. If the fountain port wasn't a thing, then this would be pretty good for Runeclaw. But it is that single land. And is that a demolition Dude. field I'm spotting on Runeclaw side? You see that? It's so yes. tiny. Yes, it I'm is. trying to read the it, text. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is a demo field. The demo field is so clutch to deal with. Dude, fountain port's one of those lands that when I first played against it, I was like, I don't really care about this card. I don't think Ooh, it's that good. Ooh, so then, we're shooting the sheriff, but not the deputy yeah. here. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's the deputy so being the fish. <laughs> fish. So the talent yeah. comes in, and honestly, I would just use the I would just use the uh, yeah. fountain port right now and get that token down. Oh, okay. Well, I guess okay, not. Okay. 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 <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Like, I get it, but I I'm interested to see Faye's co uh, thought process here. Well, what is what is Faye thinking? Hmm. Uh, well, the resources available are a fountain port, and that is alone going to give uh, enough cards to draw into all the rest of fair stuff. Just all the, all of them. Mm -hmm. All of it. Forever and ever. Times infinity. All right, uh, Runeclaw here in the tank. You notice Runeclaw hasn't been playing as many lands. I know that's kind of stating the obvious, but that is something worth noting. Yeah, unfortunately, this demo field did not hit the fountain port in time because now it's making that token and, oops, draw three cards. Oh, and yeah. When it's copied and then makes another fish, oops, draw three more cards. Four, actually, because the Enduring Innocence is something to be on the field, too. It's um, not so much an oops for uh for Catra though. <laughs> Catra likes this. No, it it very much is not. And Catra's like, wait, I can just jump block stuff everything. Um All right. Innocence comes back as a creature. Of course the loss comes back because of the demolition field. Oh, and then Beza. That is so strong right that now. That is actually. such that's... a card right now. Gosh. Such that's... a card. That's such a it's card. It's so it's so oppressive just how good it defends oh, against aggro decks. I exercise. And I don't want to do exercise. I want <laughs> to stay at home all day. Oh my gosh. Girl. Oh wait, that's the wrong that's the wrong type of exercise. Uh, Sorry. I got I got overexcited. I felt how much value that was for Catra from here. <laughs> oh yeah, that was insane. Like the, at this point, Catra's gained like eight life. Yeah. Ten life. Yeah. From spare cards. Like it's just insane. And Ketra being allowed to draw that many cards, there's just Runeclaw sitting there going, I have this nice value engine, but I don't have the lands to support it. She really needs to get something. Our queen of the dross, though. Ooh, oh, that is a nice draw. Juicy. 
Now, here's the thing, though. I mean, obviously, that's going to be either exercise or lay down arms, right? Like, there's just, again, by yeah. this point, by this point, Katra just has too many answers for it. And again, I believe here in this match, the board state, like the win condition is for Runeclaw, it's going to be what's on the field. And for Katra, it's going to be how many cards can be drawn. So two different win conditions coming aboard here. Those skeletons, I almost see Runeclaw is taking the aggro role here, right? And by this point, when your opponent has nine lands on the field, it's kind of hard to win via aggro at that point. I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> I know you wouldn't. I'm just telling everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. It's, it's, you have, yeah. Catra now has a board state that can kill Runeclaw in two turns. In addition to that, uh, Runeclaw does not seem to have a board wipe here that can actually deal with a Catra's board state. Um, mm -hmm. I can, so you have to I can invest sort of, in the early game, right? Like, that's what I'm thinking. I'm sort of like thinking, wow, these choking miasmas in the sideboard might actually just come in right now and deal with these tokens and try to like get some value with the archfiend of the dross but man that mono white deck has dealt so much with uh rune claws whole deck and catra does win game number one very very prominently with all those cards however however that skeleton deck can hit hard and hit fast so again what yes. you're going to do if you are in the position of the skeleton deck is you have to win immediately. You are in the aggro role at this point. Obviously, the mono white token control deck or mono white in air quotes because we do have Jace here. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably not going to see it, but we do have Jace. Uh, you are in the control role. You need to make sure you make it to about turn five, turn six and stabilize. So the majority of this game will be decided in the first six turns, roughly, unless something really goes wrong with land draw. But. I'm not going to try to speak that in existence. <laughs> well, we already I did know not you say for what player, so it don't count, all right? The temporary <laughs> lockdown is going to be very nice here. Most yeah. of uh, the threats in this Golgari list are all two mana or less. Uh, and the tokens that the Corpses of the Lost makes are also tokens, so they get exiled as well. So the temp lock is very nice. Uh, removing a Beza is interesting. Removing Caretaker's Talent is also interesting. But I think... Uh, Catch is just thinking, all right, I got to get rid of this. I got to get rid of that. Got to make room for this other thing. Just try to get the set of paragons in, reuse those cards, get in some temp blocks just to get rid of those tokens, and call it a day. We should be fine. If I were this mono white deck, I'd feel very confident in this matchup based on what happened uh, in the last game. All right. Uh, if you're going second with this deck, honestly, I consider keeping this. Uh, exercise, Sunfall, yeah, and and Catra's just like, yeah, yeah, this I keep. You know, me. you know, nine out of ten health experts say that you need twice as much exercise as you do normally. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 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 All right, so speaking of which, those skeletons are going to be doing work early. Again, every single time a land is dropped, there is going to be some damage dealt. And to us. All right, so now Runeclaw is going to see what we see. And it'll be interesting to see what she chooses. Probably Sunfall. The exercise is also a little threatening, but I guess you just you want to deal with what you know. Oh, Fable Passage with the damage dealers for land. I mean, it's pretty good. That's pretty good early. Fable Passage. All right. So now Sarah Paragon also wow. for the yard. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a lot of Sarah huh. Paragon early. All right. Catcher does a... not want the Sarah Paragons early. Catcher wants the Sarah Paragons late. Okay, Ooh. so skeleton down the middle here. This is getting rough. This is getting rough. So I think the only thing that can be done, no exercise either for the... No exercise? Interesting, interesting. interesting. What is Catra citing the exercise for if it's not for the corpses of the lost? Like, I don't see anything. Maybe, like, the archfiends, but, like... Yeah, this is a very... Remember when I said this would have to be uh... um, an aggro matchup? Now, base is going to be good here, but is it going to be good enough? It may not be if Runeclaw has the removal and these these lands are dealing tons of damage. Yeah. I'm Have extremely you seen surprised. This the landfall one? No, I've never seen this before. Nah, this is really, me neither. really cool. 
Yeah. I yeah. am extremely surprised to see the exercise not be used on these corpses of the lost. Like I, I'm very surprised. The amount of the amount of haste value that these corpses of the lost are providing is insane. And now Runeclaw is like, well, I only need to return one of them, and the other one can stay down because I'm only casting one at a time anyway. Yeah. So there's the one. Get him returning the second one as well. I would not. And the reason why you don't is because you want Catra to take the bait and sort of use the exercise on the enchantment. Yeah. Which is always it's always bad. But this game, I think, is deterministic. There's nothing Catra can do with their resources that can defend against Rune Claw's board state. Because yeah. That's and, a, and quite the deck there for Moonclaw. That. So we head into game three, and again, it, it's aggro versus control. That's what's going on right now. Like, I know that sounds so simple. By the way, speaking of simple, great hand here for Catra, especially going yes. first. You have the carrot cake, you have the get lost, you have the enduring innocence. This is pretty all right to start out. This is far better than the uh, first, than the second game, because Catra actually has, like, things to do, things to address threats. Uh, removal for the uh, courses of the Lost with get lost. <laughs> Get lost. There's a lot of lost. It is. Yeah. So much, so much lost. Rune Claw's like in the, in tank, the tank. Doing some thinking. That's okay. Doing thinking's a lot. Went to AFK, got some water. I, I approve of self care. I do. All right. Looking like maybe carry. Nope. Keeping up the removal instead. Keeping up the get lost. All right. The get lost is interesting. I guess I'm not really sure. Oh, the deep root wayfinder is definitely something you want to keep up mana for. But rune claw is just gonna go. Okay, I'll just play this thing that doesn't require me to play creature. Yeah. Um. Enduring innocence comes down, and if that can stick with either the carrot cake or the archangel, then Catra is gonna be off to the races here. How does rune claw respond? Ooh, going to be that's going cool. with the double. The double. Okay. All right. So we uh, love offspring here. Carrot cake plus lay down arms seems like an okay play. I agree. That's what I would probably do as well. Kill the one two. Wait, really? The one one token? I'm trying All to think right. if there's a reason why. No, no carrot cake. cake to, uh, parting gust. Lost. Or get lost. Yeah, both of those work. These vine lashers are actually extremely oppressive. Um, that is a really cool card to be playing right now. Catch is thinking, sure is. I have to kill it. I have to kill this Vine Lasher because this lookout is going to deal so much damage if it lands and is allowed to do silly things. And there's the Fable Passage. Yeah, the first and the lookout, lookout, I believe, takes any land, right? Huh? Yeah, it takes any. It, yeah, the lookout takes any land. So that's really yes, cool. It does. All right, going to make the lookout. Stronger. Oh my. That's such a cool draw with the lookout out right now. That's so it is. good. It is. Oh my gosh. Catcher's thinking, do I use this parting gust? Like, <laughs> I have to deal with this, this lookout. So again, here for folks, because again, there's like a dictionary here. It says, whenever you commit a crime, look at the top five cards. You can put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped. Yeah. So, and, committing, I... and committing a crime is essentially just targeting your opponent or one of your opponent's cards in a significant way yeah that's a good light that's a good le uh lda um that was really really good so far this enduring innocence is gonna it's gonna pay dividends to what would be a normally rough start for katra but i feel like katra is gonna turn the corner soon between the carrot cake and the enduring innocence unless rune claw can figure out a way to exile not destroy but exile the enduring innocence I mean, I don't know. This this Runeclaw's board state, Runeclaw has a lot of cards in her hand, but Catra kind of, after the Elspeth is down, if it's dealt with, that's kind of it. Yeah. Like, it's. I think things are very much up in the air right now. That duress is really nice. That's that really nice. Oh, it goes oh. to the yard. goes to the yard. And Carrot Cake will be used. This token is definitely going to be able to let Catra. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, the I sheer think you value. Have to. Yeah. Of of 300 megabytes. That's so good. Get okay. it down. I think the Elspeth has to come down at this point. Like, you don't want to lose that. Mm, well, there's an argument to be made that you would do the Parting Gust instead. Um, 
and hold up removal essentially for anything Runeclaw tries to do. Okay, all right, all right. There is an argument to be made for that. Yep. Yeah, Catra needs to play very carefully. If Catra overcommits non creatures, then Runeclaw just plays aggro and wins the game. So Catra needs to hold up some removal just in case. All right, in the tank again. Oh, oh my wow. god. Wow, and... wow, 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 wow. That's do you like do you four sunfall? damage? You don't want a sunfall here. Uh, that's so hard to uh, to like determine if sunfall is correct. That I mean, is a lot of damage. You do have a lot of life gain and a lot of draw though. Like carrot cake's coming back up. It's a hard sell. I think. I would attack I with it in during yeah. Innocences first, and then Sunfall, especially if they die. And they're not blocked, obviously. No, I, I think you do yeah. Carrot Cake instead and try to race, maybe. Oh! <laughs> does not want another one. Does not God. want another one. Got it. Noted. That is gross. Okay, okay. This is this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Look at all this life gain for Catra. Yeah, but it's not good card advantage. Well, it's good card advantage, but then it's kind of removed by the fact that, like, if you one for one these tokens, you're using a lot of resources for essentially a one one and a two two, which is. But you're you're drawing a lot of resources too. This one's a little tricky. That is right? true. Yeah, it's hard to evaluate because like Catch is drawing a lot and is able to be comfortable to use these removal spells on Rune Claws creatures. I mean, Carrot Cake draw two on the opponent's turn. I mean, that's that's pretty good. Draw two, gain three. I mean, whew. we do like Carrot. We do like Carrot Cake here. I mean, it is kind of cute. Floink. <laughs> mm -mm. It's good for your eyes. Runeclaw's in the tank. Plays the Fabled Passage. Oh my passage. gosh, another. That is another Fabled Passage. Catra is very, has to be very happy that the vast majority of these have been removed. Could you imagine if none of them got removed? Six damage per land? Don't mind if oh I do. Oh my gosh. That is terrifying to think about. Terrifying. I don't understand the issue. <laughs> 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 here, I thought you'd be in favor of the control part, and you're like, I don't understand the issue with all these crimes being committed. <laughs> I don't know. Runeclaw's deck is interesting and has a lot of synergy in it. It's yeah. kind of a, unfortunate that we're not seeing it at, like, its most... Oh. Oh. That is a really, really, really good draw, actually. The throwback? Yeah, Destroy and Enduring Innocence takes all the graveyard is so strong right now. It just destroys one, though, correct? Yeah, it does, but it destroys it permanently because it exiles the graveyard. You, you take so your draw nice. two right now, right? No? no, apparently not. Okay. Maybe Catcher doesn't quite realize that that's how that works. He goes, oh, dang. Maybe I should have drawn two cards instead of just one. I mean, again, it's much easier for us to see that, though, right? You're in the heat of the moment, and it's like, oh, my gosh. you know, That's like, true. I get that. I get that a ton. Yeah. There's oh, a... and the Sarah Paragon right after the yard gets exiled. Oh, I mean, hey. most of this, I think. Oh, well, you had a bunch of carrot cakes, actually. Yeah, You're right. yeah. yeah. Those carrot cakes would have been nice to get back for sure. The Enduring Innocence attacks, obviously, to get to get, get it as an enchantment. Back. Yeah, because Catra wants to Sunfall here, but they can't Sunfall if the if the Innocence is on the, as a creature. Good point. Like Runeclaw is very slowly being drained of resources, and Catra does not have like a low life total at all. Mm -mm. All right, well, Catra okay. gets what Faye wants there, because here comes Enduring Innocence, and that Sunfall is going to be coming down. Sweet. That's eight? Eight, eight? That's, That's a lot. Good. It's a lot. That is a lot of damage. Or Faye are just going to cast something else. I mean, carrot cake into a land is a thing. That is true. Nope. Wow, that is such a good draw. Oh, there it is. There it is. No. Dang, you are I, you are difficult to predict, Catcher. Every time I'm like, okay, blah 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 blah. But again, I love. Oh Catra's wow, cards. there goes the other enduring innocence. That's getting completely shafted right now. 
That's Mixed okay, though. Sense. Yeah. Naturalize? Goodbye. Be dead. Gets rid of the I love that the sacrifice... I love that the sacrifice food item button has, like, a little pie. That's actually really cute. All right. Down the middle for three. Do you want to go through? Nah, just gonna, wanna... gonna keep the three alive. Mm. One less power on the on the sunfall. Not a huge problem. No, not on oh, ball. there's the fountain port. Fountain port is such a strong card. It's so good. Maybe the sunfall doesn't get played here. I don't uh, know it does. Okay. Yeah. Well, you need to eventually address Rune Claw's uh, damage engine with the lands. You can't mm -hmm. just leave it alone. So Wait, catch is us that thinking, a 10? <laughs> it is, in fact, a 10. Oh, yes. my gosh. That is a 10. It is a good second right. Okay, Arc Fiend hits the board. Probably a parting gust target. Yeah, or you probably. Just play another Sunfall, you know. Well, why not? Them's the breaks. Sunfall, <laughs> take 10. And then, no, I think Archangel Elseth or. Oh, never mind. Oh, you're yeah. right. Sunfall, oh, take okay. 10. And remember, those tokens can't be duplicated. I mean, they can if you want to draw, but that's all you're going to get. They don't come in with the 1-1 counters on them. That is true. I know this from not personal experience, but I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did not make that mistake before. Mm, no. <laughs> no, never. no, 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 not no, 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 no. <laughs> nope, 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 Not once, not once, not once, not once. All right. I believe that is the final Fabled Passage. I think we've seen all four over the course of this. We know because of all the land damage. Uh, Ooh, that way is nice. Yeah. A little too late, though, sadly. Yeah. You get a fish. What? You get... Oh, that's kind of cool. Get a land. Nice. Suddenly, the field got much simpler, but that is a Beza off the top. Oh my that's god. A, that that's a pretty good draw. That's a pretty good draw. <laughs> you know? I feel like if I'm I feel like if I'm Rune Claw here, I'm sitting here like, man, I don't know how I win this game with all these different things coming down. Oh, carrot cake. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Keep that. This looks it like this is this looks like Rune Claw's resources have been dried up at this point, and that is going to be it. What a match. I like there you Rune go. Claw's deck. I may give that a try at some point. It looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. I really liked it. It seems like it's explosive in some circumstances, but in others it can be a little difficult because everything has such synergy with each other. Normally, mid-range decks have like cards that are intrinsically powerful, and that deck seems like it needed multiple pieces to do stuff. I do want to congratulate Catra, by the way, on the 7-0. I've only done that oh, yeah. once. It's really difficult to do, so congratulations. I always 6-1-7-0, exceedingly hard to do here in the competitive league, such as the VML. So, uh, Kuro, do you have any closing comments, any thoughts heading into the playoffs next week? Build it bigger, build it better. Kuro wants more bricks. Noted. Put, 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 put the bricks in your deck, regardless of what color your deck is. No, that's terrible advice. Um... <laughs> I think if you have an idea for a really interesting deck idea, don't don't dismiss it. Um, there are some really interesting strategies that still have yet to be explored in this format. And even though they're really dominant archetypes and playing them is very reliable, you never know what could hit you. Um, and today it was a really good example of that. Certainly. And again, just... These decks are going to be really important. We have all the deck lists from Worlds as well. And then we have to think about, now it'll be once the VML season's over, but we're all going to have to think about how does Foundations configure into this. So when y'all walk away from this, think about tonight, what is Foundations going to add to current standard as we head into next year, where, what was it, six new sets are being added into standard, Kuro? I think we were talking about this in the pre-show. That's a lot. <laughs> 
that is, you know, yes, some of is. us who only play standard and limited. I mean, of course, you know, folks who are playing extended are better. So that's not that. Oh, that's like, oh my gosh, that's massive. So it is worth thinking about going forward. But good luck to everyone in the wild card. Good luck to everybody in the playoff rounds. Y'all can do this. Just keep doing the best that you can. And again, the standard's very, very complicated to navigate, but I have faith in y'all. So, Kuro, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, I'm available on Discord, and I do lots of things there. Yippee. Lots of things. <laughs> All right. And as for me, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash skybills. I do magic at least once or twice a week there. I love my limited. I love my limited. Uh, you can also catch some uh, classic old school Yu-Gi-Oh! action on some of the Game Boy Advance games. Um, so twitch.tv slash skybills, twitch.youtube.com slash skybills for some of my old speedrunning stuff. And you can find me on Blue Sky and Twitter at Skybills as well. Want to give a big thank you to Wizards. A big thank you to Phoebe. Phoebe, feel free to plug your content in chat as well in case folks would like to give you a follow as they should. Uh, to our wonderful admin team, especially everyone who had to work so hard before MagicCon this weekend to make this cast possible. To our casters, not just myself and Kuro, but we have a whole team of casters that we absolutely love. We couldn't do this without y'all as well. To our players, thank you so much again. Very difficult league, but, you know, again, if Magic is truly about the gathering, then the VML is one of the best experiences out there because wonderful way to meet folks in the community. And, of course, to you, the viewers, we appreciate y'all for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, consider dropping a follow here on Twitch so you can follow us Sunday evenings again. 6 p.m. Eastern is where you can find our cast here at the VML. So be sure to give us a follow on social media and here. And we look forward to seeing you all in the future. Again, from the VML, I'm Skybills and we have Kuro as my co-caster. Good luck to everybody in the playoffs and we will see you next week. Good evening, everyone. <laughs>